Hey, what is going on, guys? Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. Today, we have an exciting time. We got Scott Newby in the house. Just oh, literally, guys. just literally got off a plane from the Chicago land area, was up at his house. So tonight, we're going to kind of kick it off and share a little bit about that. We've got some topics we're going to discuss tonight. We've got questions we're going to answer. So if you've got questions, definitely drop those in the chat. Super chats, of course, always get priority, but they're definitely not required. Fellas, what is going on, man? I literally got home 10 minutes ago. Fired up the computer. I had to restart my router. It was all jacked up, man. It was blinking in and out. How y'all doing? I'm, I'm doing tired. fantastic. It's been so long since I've seen you. It's been a while, man. It's been a hot minute, like literally a hot minute since yeah. you and I hung out. And that time went so, went like, so so fast man super super fast we'll talk about the event um, what scott's been doing over the past probably five years and uh, we'll kind of hit some highlights and if you guys ha were at the event in the chat let us know and uh, let us know where you're watching from so let me say hi to some folks in the chat geotech good to see you srw 1000 chris good to see you man he says gangsters what's up guys <laughs> uh let's see who else uh, Megatronics, good to see you, man. Tyler's in the house. SRW1000. John Raiders, good to see you. Brian, what's happening, man? Sebastian, lots of folks. K-Man, good to see you. Tar Hoya. Tristan, what's going on? <laughs> Look at this one. Tristan says... Oh, man, I just lost it. I, was I got two different windows. Here we go. Scott Newby is responsible for more earthquakes than tectonic plates. <laughs> for sure, man. That's funny. So... Welcome to the live stream, man. Hey, man. Thanks, man. I, it's cooler hanging out with you guys in person, but I mean, this works okay. And you guys look fantastic. I look terrible. Hey, we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we're I swear gonna... this shirt isn't all faded out like this. This is fairly new, man. <laughs> it's hot pink, really, in, in real life, but it looks orange on this way, on this yeah. side. <laughs> cool, man. No worries, man. So, yeah, I invited Scott. I'm literally on the airplane. I'm like, hey, dude, you want to jump on for a few minutes and talk about the event he's like yeah i could do that we're gonna try to get cat on his uh she was up um late she's got other things going on so it was like all right we'll get yeah, her on she, she she was gonna be part of this she's like dude she's like if yeah. i would have knew beforehand i i could have i now that you had her on camera once michael i can't get yeah. off camera there you go <laughs> yep so the cool thing all right well let's talk about the event first so scott you've been doing this about five years um kind of on and off you've had a bunch of people over at your house First of all, while tell us kind of what you have in your home as far as your setup for those in the chat that aren't familiar with that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to pull up. I got to go find them first. Um, I'm going to send myself some photos, which I thought I already did. Oh, dear. It's back. Uh -oh. What? Oh. You're cutting it... out again. <clears throat> all right, we all talk. I don't know what to talk about. You were the only one that was there with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I reset my router. Uh, so I want to find out about cat liking your speakers. I read in a Facebook post that those RTJs are hers. That she yeah, loved things as I, much. I as didn't you want would. that news to come out, but yeah, they are. They are not my property. That's awesome that she enjoys that a lot. Yeah, uh, Michael did like a little interview video on that because people weren't really believing that story, man. But that is, well, first off, what what I was doing around the Chicago lander. I mean, you boys been doing down in Kansas City forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Wisconsin guys were doing it forever. We all just kind of, you know, just happened to meet each other. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing in their own region. So that part of it definitely wasn't new, but it was just nice to see the new new faces coming around. Like when we come down, I met you. you know, I met Tony and Nick and all those guys from Wisconsin, and then a couple years later, I met you guys. So sure. Um, ba basically, with what I was doing, like everybody that came yesterday, I said this is like a one percent of like what M Wave is. It's just mm -hmm. It's funny. Because half of the people are outside talking in the yard and half people are inside taking demos. Everybody's taking each other's phone numbers or mm -hmm. AVS handles. And, you know, just like how you guys do at M-Wave about, hey, everybody just kind of hang out and get together. That's all we were trying. I mean, that's all I've ever been trying to do. It ain't the gear's cool. Demos are cool. But, I mean, what my, we had somebody over to like 12 or 1 o'clock. That DJ from Chicago, we had him over. And then... Um, the next day, we had like 40 or 45 people ended up coming over. 
Youth man's internet is drunk. Yeah, we agree. <laughs> um, is it any better? Choppy. Now you sound like you're delayed and muted. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to restart my computer. I'll okay. be back. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. See you tomorrow, buddy. So did you did you do <laughs> two different demo sessions then, or was it just one one big one with no. some ad hoc stuff? <clears throat> well, there were some guys that couldn't make that event, and then there was a couple guys that wanted just kind of like a more, I don't know, let's just say intimate experience without everybody around. So we kind of catered to them a little bit. And literally, man, there was, I don't know if this guy's in the chat, but, man, we had a trooper. He literally flew from Minnesota to Chicago, rented a car, drove to my house for one hour. What? Did you get the, dude, my mind was blown. Drove back to the airport, got on a plane, flew back to Minnesota. <laughs> one hour. Dedication. I, yeah. I was, Did you get I, to experience the 150 dB levels? Did you let him have it? Yeah, actually, I told him, I said, dude, I said, whatever, whatever music you want to hear, whatever food you want, dude, because that's, that why, is like that's why he flew back so quickly. It was life flight. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely cater any, anybody that wasn't like within an hour or two driving distance. I certainly, you know, just cater to them more because, I mean, if you're making a five, six, seven hour driver flying in for something, dude, I mean, you, you can't beat that kind of commitment. So, sure. Uh, but no, we pretty much, I we ran both systems all day. I had two channel going upstairs on RTJs and then um, just video clips running through the Zipidi on like 20 minute reels. And we just swap in three or four people all all day. We ran from like 9.30 in the morning till 6.30 night, pretty much nonstop. Wow. Yeah. So people was, come in and out or were they there for most of the time or what was the, what was the? Um, On average, we tried to keep somewhat track of it. On average is about like three hours um mm -hmm. there were a handful of guys that literally stayed all day and then went to shoot pool with us at night and then went to buffalo wild wings with us at like nine ten o'clock after we got <laughs> done shooting pool so yeah. Yeah, we, we we certainly had a good time but my, my hearing's a little affected today my voice you know just talking yeah. and then trying to talk over the music and and stuff like that so yeah you know that's all that's right fun. I'm not complaining. Joys of the hobby. Yeah. And your what wife's fully on board? Like, oh, sorry, Ryan. No, nope, go, go ahead. I was that just going to say, question. is your wife on board with all the people and stuff too? Or is the music? Oh, dude. Oh, I mean, awesome. The, um, Mike and Jeff stayed at my place the night before. Um, we took Michael to a Lou, Lou Malnati's Pizzeria by Chicago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Because uh, he, he never ate at one before. And then we went to... Um, um, Gio, he's he's in the chat right now. We went over to his theater. He's got GTR theater. But um, she's like, dude, I'd go out to dinner with you, but we got a few more things we need for the get together. I'll help get the house ready. I'll go do the last minute shopping. And then she makes name tags for everybody. She was having everybody sign all the waivers. So yeah. she was, it, yeah, just with with it all with it all day, man. Part of the yeah. interview that youth man want to do. I mean, at first, because I've been in the hobby my whole life, she's like. So you get together with guys and listen to radios. <laughs> I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and then as she got to meet some of the guys and just see us all sharing like stories of our families with each other. She's like, oh, she's like, it's like a brotherhood. It ain't all just about, you know, the, yeah. the stereos and the equipment and stuff. So, and she knows a lot of these guys now. They're friends on Facebook or they chat. So, I mean, I haven't no, she's she's been super cool, man. So it'd be a it'd be a rough life for me if she wasn't. Yeah. But that's really cool that she's engaged and helping you get your event kicked off. I know my wife's helps me get my stuff kicked off as well. Maybe not to her pleasure, but she's very very helpful in that regard. My wife just tolerates me. <laughs> as does everyone, correct? Yeah, that's oh. kind of how my life my life is. Just one toleration to the next. All right, but my question better? was, take us through the story of how the RTJs in your living room came to be, because they're your wife's. How did that conversation start? Like, where did that come from? So, because me and Jeff ended up becoming friends after I bought a few subwoofers off him and going to a shop a couple times. He goes, hey, I'm releasing a new product. And this was before I was having a big get together. Maybe like I'd have 10 guys over, 15 guys over. And he goes, he was actually taking them somewhere else. He goes, but I'm going to be coming through like your neighborhood, through the Chicagoland. 
He goes, why don't I stop by for a few hours with them? We set them up in your living room and the 15 guys you have over can just check them out. She, she wasn't even here that night. So we checked them out and I was telling her about showing her pictures and, you know, she just laughed. She's like, yeah, you know, dream on. You got your room downstairs. The whole reason we bought this house was so you could put all your toys in the basement. So then I guess like after the final release and then I was having a little bit bigger get togethers and, and then Tony was kind of involved uh, with JTR at that point. I talked to those guys. And I was getting a sub ship to my house and just talked to those guys. And he goes, well, I'll send RTG set up out to your house. Tony will come down and set it up and dial it in and uh, just let everybody, you know, enjoy it for the day or two you're doing the event. So we did that. But that night after a lot of people left and we might, everybody might've had a couple of cocktails and stuff and all the guys are just chatting and she's sitting in cause we had a hot seat there right in the middle and she's listening to Metallica black album, just enjoying herself. But it just kept getting louder and louder <laughs> And louder. And I, then I'm finally like, dude, man, it's like 11 o'clock. You're going to get us in some trouble in the neighborhood. So she come up. She goes, I know these speakers are expensive. She goes, but they can't leave the house. She goes, I've never, she goes, I've never, I've never heard how I just feel like I'm right in the middle of that concert. And she was just playing all her favorite music. She goes, this is, this is unbelievable. And she's, She's a um, popular store by us is apt ABT in Chicago. They had mm -hmm. the uh, Martin Logan Neil. She's heard those and she loved those too. I mean, but you know, who's got the money for those, you know, certainly not us. And um, she's like, she's like, dude, she's like, um, she's like, I know I said no speakers in the living room. She's. And so I normally when people or partners say no speakers in the living room, they <laughs> tolerate like a bookshelf yeah. or a sound bar. Right. Not something that's seven yeah. feet tall and weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> so I, um, I reached out to Jeff and Tony and, um, the, I mean, the only dealer that I knew at that time that actually knew the guy was Mike Boker Michael. from high impact AV. And, um, I say, hey, brother, give me a call. We got to have a chat and we're not allowed to talk about the price. That's what the wife said. She's like, dude, I just <laughs> you told me once. And we will never discuss that. But the good thing is, is, don't, is, don't I'm, not the guy that, is I, I'm not the guy that goes out and buys anything like this. I'll keep these speakers until the termites tear them down to the ground, you know? <laughs> I'm just the guy that doesn't go buy anything like this, just bought a seven, six thousand. Mike, uh, Ryan, you're, you want to show your computer off? You're cutting out real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that kind of negativity around here, brother. <laughs> Is my audio any better? Yes. Yeah, You're a little delayed. delayed, but we can hear you. Oh, weird. Oh, well. Hey, Johnny's in the chat. Johnny was there at the event. He says, hey, Scott Newby, thanks for letting me come and hang out with you and your wife. And wish I could have stayed longer. Great setup, youth man. Um, oh, oh, I got you. That was two words or two sentences. He says, youth man, great seeing you again, buddy. JTR and RTJ sounds great. Johnny, brother, you are another trooper. This guy, yeah. red-eye flight from Texas yeah. to Chicago, hung out for three or four hours, rented a car, drove down, yeah. hung out for three or four hours, drove back to the airport, flew back to Texas last night. <laughs> Johnny, yeah. you're, the, you're the real MVP too, brother. Nice. Yeah, man. It was great hanging out with everybody, man. Everybody was just having a, a blast, man. Scott, you had the taco truck outside. So that yeah, was super... every, yeah. <clears throat> everybody's like, oh, you're just trying to outdo all the other guys that do these get-togethers. And I was like, dude, every nope. time I order pizzas, it's like three or $400. Yep. And then some people don't eat cheese. People are like, oh, I don't <laughs> eat onions. And then we end up with like two or three large pizzas that nobody eats. I'm like, Dude, they'll just pull up. They'll make whatever you want. Just pay for whatever everybody eats. You don't have to destroy your house with cooking. And you got to worry about the yeah. garbage. They pull up, cook lunch for an hour or two, and then they leave. It's, I mean, it, it was right in the same realm money-wise as just ordering a bunch of pizzas for everybody. Yeah. You don't have to clean up and everything else. Yeah, because the last couple of years, Cat would stay up at night, make appetizers, make food for everybody. And I was like, dude, you don't got to do that. And then the mess, and then you're running the oven and making the whole kitchen a mess. It's Yeah, it was, it was certainly a good idea to do this. Yeah, for sure. So did y'all get a chance to talk about what was downstairs in your home theater? 
No, we were just talking about you the whole time, but now that you're back. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we've done the whole weekend, man. Just laugh and have a great time, man. It's been a blast. I don't have any money left because Michael took it all. Did you guys know he's a pool shark? It ain't just his daughter. What? Yeah, dude, well, you got to yeah. hear this story. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you share. No, so, yeah, after the get-together yesterday, I mean, we were jam-packed for quite a few hours, and then as it kind of settled down, um, we are like, what do you guys want to do? And um, uh, Jeff's like, man, I haven't shot pool forever, and I used to shoot pool all the time, and Michael goes, I shot pool, you know, back when the dinosaurs roamed around. So we, we went down to the pool hall, and, uh, and – I mean, everybody didn't do too bad, but but Michael Michael had some good shots in him. We we were kind of surprised. So he we were he was sending videos to his daughter and stuff. So mm -hmm. now they're going to be traveling around, you know. I guess taking everybody on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, that was a good time. Then we did a late night dinner. Every night was a late night, that's for sure. But that's it's weird when you get into this mode, just like M Wave. It's like you mm -hmm. just. Dude, because after it went, we, I went to Ryan's house till like 1 a.m. I got back to the hotel like 1 30. Then we, yeah. the next night we went over to Jonathan's till midnight or whatever. Yeah. It's like you just don't want the party to stop, you know? But when your head hits that pillow, it's over. <laughs> yeah. So I'll pull up a photo here. So this is just a glimpse of what's in Scott's setup. So these are three JTR Captivator 4,000 ULFs. No, 6,000s. 6, yeah, I mean, that's not really a phrase, but... It, it is. Uh, it's, yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I thought somebody said that that was something that... No, if, you, if no. you email JTR and you want to cap 6,000, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, 6,000. They're amps. larger amps. It I really is a thing. Well, I know that they have a larger 6,000 amp, but I didn't know there was a model number, 6,000 ULF. Yes. So these are 6,000 ULFs. Um, these are three out of seven in his room. Oh. So there are 14, 18 inch subwoofers, 42,000 Watts. Is that right? Ooh. Yeah. And, and then, uh, I got that set. I got another speaker 6,000 for that. So we were running like, I mean like 48,000 for the LFE channel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the LFE man. <laughs> oh, I, how many 20 amp circuits are you running in that room? I have eight 220 volt feeds coming for LFE. Oh, nice. You're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so there's there's no dimming of lights. I mean, it's no tripping so, breakers, no nothing. And uh, it we we did quite a few demos yesterday, and uh, it was the, for the guys that wanted it. Man, they were you know got that I I can't breathe. I'm really choked up re response from those guys. And that I was going for that for myself because I don't know why I I don't know why there's something wrong in my head that I think that's a good time, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, once in a while, you just want to torment yourself a little bit. But so, how close is your? How close are your neighbors? <laughs> yeah. they're, they're close, they're Scott close. actually lives oh. in a duplex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One bedroom studio. Um, Top floor. Yeah, they uh, they're actually pretty close, Jonathan, yeah. and um, you could hear the system outside. I mean, I'm in the basement oh, sure. with this. You, you can yeah. hear it outside. Nobody's ever. It wasn't nuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it completely dirt all the way around? Like the, it's a true basement, not a walkout. Or no, walkout? true, true basement. Yeah. Okay. True, yeah. yeah, that helps an awful lot for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm certainly of, more worried about people hearing the RTJs upstairs actually than the basement. Well, because first of all, the basement, I, I don't, I, I, I don't listen to it that loud unless somebody comes over. Right, I just yeah. wants to experience. I mean, so I'm never worried about somebody complaining. Scott about is actually the grandpa from the old THX com commercials. <laughs> Turn it up! Yeah. People's heads are exploding as the volume turns on. That's Scott. Yeah. I kind of look like a zombie in this video, too. You guys all look like Brad Pitt, and I do look like the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, man. You're good. We're glad you're here. Uh, let's see. There was something I was wanting to show you. Oh, okay. So this right here. So those three Captivator... 6,000 ULFs, that's directly behind the four seats. Yeah, and just Good. so people know, you can, I, I can still recline. Like I showed Michael, the seat's still fully re reclined. Oh, that, that's not stopping that. I, I would have never put them there if that was the case. Which seat is the king seat? Left two, baby. Right yeah, there. The, yeah. Doesn't it? Which one do you sit in, Scott? The, the second uh, from left. Does it bother you ever that the sub is not centered behind you? It, it 
it bothers me immensely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm yeah, touching on a sore subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, and this, this will touch on a lot of things for guys that don't have purpose built rooms when they build their house or my basement's just kind of oddly shaped. I split half of it to make like an old time grocery store and game room with arcade games and stuff for the kids. And then in my room, just the way the doorway comes and I have my water meter coming and it's all kind of framed out. So the whole room isn't completely centered. So there's, and I, and I have OCD, so it's really bad for somebody like me, but I mean, I just did what I could, but yes, it bothers me. It wouldn't be a problem if the subs weren't larger than the chairs. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But I guess you got to take some and give some a little bit here. It's part of the sacrifice for subs that are that large. (laughs) exactly and the only reason why i did this because i used to have the sofa tables behind here and you wouldn't even see them right they were low but i wanted to have the 18 firing at your butt and an 18 right at your head so this was really the only thing that i could nothing like a movie experience without a concussion that's right so gotta watch fury and if you watch a war movie you gotta leave with physical injury that's (laughs) that's just how we roll immersion earplugs but then next year we're gonna pass out helmets too so mm. <laughs> well hey everybody signed their waiver michael we did we actually had waivers this year that was hilarious i mean it was a good thing i told him i said one of uh his friends mentioned that he said you know you really ought to consider this because i mean scott's pushing about 150 db that's a lot and of course none of us ever watch a movie at 150 that's insane this is literally like you watch on online and guys are, you know, they've got the brand new Tesla plaid and they got their buddy in the seat and they're like, you ready? Boom. And they just hit it and they're in launch mode, hypersonic mode, ludicrous mode, whatever they call it. And you have that dr- adrenaline rush for literally, what'd you play it? Maybe 20 seconds, 30 yeah, seconds. We're doing like 10 or 15 second clips, you know, just yeah. cause I, I didn't want to drive the neighbors too crazy if they could hear it, hear it or didn't like it. That's why we were only doing those kind of demos, you know, one yeah. or two every hour. Yeah. You know, I, and, you know, you and, and, nobody, and nobody wants to sit there and listen to it anyway. They just want mm-hmm. to experience it yeah. for a couple of seconds, say you did it, yeah. and then, you know, move on. Everybody yeah. wants to do just the regular clips at reference with the subs. You know, to me, that, that that's that's the real fun stuff. That's what everybody wants to check out. Yeah. But we we played mu- music dip. Or you would have like four or five movie clips for him, so they would cycle through that. And then he'd go, "Hey, Michael, get ready for the 150 dB." <laughs> so I'd take my camera, go downstairs, and so I've got my earplugs in, and I'm I'm sitting on the floor looking at everybody and just capturing their reaction and gasping for breath and holding their chest. <laughs> See, I felt weird if keeping up with the Jones. I. Because I, I didn't want people to think like, oh, this guy just thinks he's awesome and we got to sign a waiver. Because to me, that sounds silly. Yeah. Because like if just you guys came to my house, I'd just be like, hey, dude, it's kind of loud. Yeah. And I wouldn't worry about it. But yeah. a buddy of mine that's a lawyer, he's like, you don't have the people coming over you don't know. And just because yeah. they're really friendly to you, yeah. you don't want to get a call in a, a, a week or two or a month. And somebody's trying to settle out of court with you for some money or something. So, I mean, I, I, I felt I felt kind of silly about it to be honest with you because some people think oh you know who who do you think you are but i i don't want to deal with that after the fact yeah. it's the truth i think it's yeah. legit because they is. can have their audio audiologist you know say hey you yeah. got some tinnitus that probably came from that experience and then yeah. you got to fight that off yeah, yeah exactly so. did and you so have to fight funny. this when you tried to get life insurance <laughs> <laughs> they're like nah, that ain't happening <laughs> So the good news is he does have a defibrillator in there. Or does the homeowner's insurance policy know about this room? Um, I'm not at liberty to speak on that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mike said he was there. He said I had to take video of Scott's upstairs while the 150 DB demos, 150 DB demos were taking place. And I did the same. So I'll have a video on that of people's reaction. Um I'm upstairs also, and and he's just cranking it, and there's stuff just moving, and it's pretty wild, man. It, I, I'm su- everybody's surprised that your house is still standing, and it's, mm-hmm. it's true. So, but it, but other than that, so people look at you, Scott, and, and they go, "All right, who in the world needs 14, 18s? Nobody needs that. That's that was your desire. That and we talked about in that in the interview. 
that was your plan. That was your desire. And not everybody needs that. Most people don't need that. Very few. I, t- I tell everybody they don't. Because yeah. usually, Michael, how it works is somebody will reach out to me that 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 doesn't own JTR or even an 18-inch sub or something, and they'll be like, hey, can I come by? And it's almost always, mm-hmm. I would never buy this many subs, or I would never, you know, the wife wouldn't let it happen, but can I just experience one or two? So I'll just go into the DSP, or I'll just go up to the subs themselves or a breaker, and I'll just run like one in the front and one in the back. And most people are like, yeah, dude, that's plenty. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So when when guys come over to demo, I mean, they'll, they'll check out the whole system, how I have it set up. But for anybody that's looking to do something in their room, it's usually they just want to hear like one or two. Yeah. So and that's what, yeah. if I wasn't looking just for that kind of and I think it's maybe maybe out of boredom of the hobby I was at just because I, I ever since I was just a little kid, I just grew up through it with my old man and stuff. And I just was like, I just want to do something that I've never experienced. You know, like the guys with the Christie projectors and the 200 inch screens. I mean, how awesome is that, dude? I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'd love to do that. But this was just something that I was never able to experience somewhere. So I just wanted to, to do it in my own space. But if I was just worried about reference and even a little bit hot, save a lot of money, one sub in the front, one sub in the back, or like four RS ones, one in each corner. And, yeah. and dude, you'd be, be more than set. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't. You don't have. You know, I, everybody comes down here and said, "Dude, this is just the journey I was on." If you want a cool home theater, you could do it for a lot less than what's going on here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Eric says, you know, he's got a PSA eighteen in the front, one in the back, and it blows people away. Couldn't imagine what <laughs> as many you can't, and nobody does. Mm-hmm. They go in there, they don't know what they expect. It it literally, it takes your breath away. You're like, oh my gosh. I mean, well, yeah, and I and I tell everybody that that, that near field is a game changer. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you know, to, to just have that impact right behind you, it, it not mm-hmm. only makes it louder, you get the impact from it, it makes it more real. I, a near field dialed in, you, yeah. you, you don't need a whole room full of subs if you do it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I've, I've said on the podcast many times, out of all of those type of tactile, near field's my favorite by far. Um, and then something like a, a butt kicker, Croson, and then maybe like a, a platform type. You know, Speaking boss. of Buck Kicker, and this this brings uh, Jonathan's room into it too. And Ryan, you had Buck Kickers too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is how awesome is it, guys? Even Tony from JTR, I know he's watching. He he listened to it. He goes, "Dude, that was awesome." He goes, "Are your Buck Kickers on?" I said, "Dude, <laughs> if you got ass, why does it matter?" That's I said, awesome. "All you're doing is telling me that I dialed it in right." So for all the people that are like, "Oh, they're gimmicky," yeah. or you know, they don't make any sense. They have, yeah. ju- I man, I swear they have just not experienced them dialed in correct. Mm-hmm. I had at least ten people out of fifty that were like, "So you do have buck kickers? Were they on or off?" So all the guys that were completely blown away, I was like, "Oh, those are off. You want me to turn them on?" They're like, "What?" <laughs> so, but no, man, you, you just gotta go to yeah. somebody's house that has had them dialed in good. Yeah, and one thing that you're trying to do is 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 the same thing we're doing with the M wave and what Jonathan's doing, what Ryan's doing and all these get togethers in different places. And we're trying to help build community. And we saw that at your event. Um, like you said, there were plenty of times for demos, but people were there. One gentleman showed up and he was out in the, um, in the yard and we were talking with him and he's come to M way both years. And he's at all the events. He's big in the AVS forum, just a great dude. And he's like, and I hate that I, I had some family stuff going on. So I got here late and he didn't mention the demo. He didn't mention the gear. He's like, you know, I wish I was here earlier to hang out with the people, you know, yeah. that's awesome, man. And that's what it's about. The people, the community, you guys in the chat, um, that's what this whole thing's about. And that's what we're trying to help, you know, build up and, and uh, just have a great time doing it. So well, even at M-Wave, when you guys had that going on, how many times did you see just big groups of guys yeah. standing outside of the rooms yeah. all ordering lunch together? I mean, yeah. people that didn't even know each other. Hey, we're ordering this. We're ordering this. You want to get out on lunch with us? I mean, yeah. you know, how mm-hmm. cool was that? Instead of, you know, because mm-hmm. I, and not to talk bad about Expona, but I've been there a couple of times and it's literally, you're a lone wolf yeah. and it's, you know, you're doing everything alone or by yourself. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I mean, if you if you want to go look at a hundred thousand dollar turntable, that's cool. But it just that sure. wasn't my that wasn't my speed. Yeah, 
So I used to, I mean, I used to really enjoy exploring when Emotiva was there and Seton was there and JTR was there. That was the only reason that I, I would go, but you know, definitely. We're trying to do something, you know, yeah. different in the space. And, you know, we've got the dates up on the website. We don't have registration yet. Still working on um, some really exciting stuff. I think you guys are really going to uh, be excited about some things that we're doing this year, but we've got the dates. So mark it on your calendar, June 21st through the 23rd. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we'll have uh, additional details. I'll give you plenty of time, probably a week or two before we go live with the registration. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man. So make sure you're subscribed at least to the newsletter because I'll let you know there. Of course, I'll post it on Facebook. I'll post it on, you know, pretty much everywhere on all the platforms, Patreon. Um, so just make sure you're at least plugged in somewhere so that you get the notification. But we'll give you plenty of plenty of time to get registered uh, when that comes about so sweet man i got you a question know? for you scott yeah, before we move topics when you yeah. when you're calibrating your system how much hotter than say main so if you're doing everything to 75 db where do your subs settle out like what's your preference are you 20 db hot 10 db hot 90 db hot where do you where do you fall yeah. usually usually i i run about four to, for my like say if we're watching a new release movie, usually we're like neg negative five from reference with the subs fourteen hot. Mm -hmm. That that's that's usually my go to move. Mm -hmm. So um, then when everybody comes over, we run a, a tad hotter just because that's what people want to experience. And then you know for the other for the for the for the main, I mean like for the one fifty one, you know then we're running around fifty dB hot. Fifty dB hot. Yeah. Well, the Holy speakers crap. can't keep up with it, so you got to yeah. do it somehow. Tristan, yeah. you're you're way off there, buddy. <laughs> he says 30 dB hot, and he was joking. Wow, <laughs> 50 dB hot. Holy well, I, I mean, that's the only way that, that you're going to get there, you know. So, but you know, but no, yeah, usually, well, that's got to be close to what you and Ryan are running too, right? I mean, that's what I'm guessing. You guys are probably like eight or ten, right? I I use nine for movies, so you're oh, fourteen. Okay. I'm nine. It's in the same ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I like I like twelve to fifteen for music. So in that realm, yeah. like I kind of have different settings for my music versus movies. Mm -hmm. And my, if, do you do that, or do you just kind of keep it at a flat fourteen? No, no, no. I'm I'm di I'm different too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm different too. I'm usually like two or three dB, and I just adjust it in the pre in the preamp because like there are movies my preamp would be like a negative nine, and then I think for mm -hmm. music I'm at like negative five. Mm -hmm. on the I'll yeah. just say that it changes virtually for everything for me because nothing's yeah. mastered the same level. So I'm constantly having to change things up and down because yeah. when you turn on certain content, it's like, ah, oh, I was at my standard and the room's falling apart because the bass mix is way too loud or vice versa. You have to boost things. Same thing with music. It just depends. Well, when I like, what's your K-scape setting? Because that's what all my demos were pretty much on when I was at your place. You were what, 10? Do you run right around 10? Uh, no, I'm probably like 14 or 15 hot, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. but I do change the bass mix a little bit cause I can do it dynamically without anybody seeing it, but it's, it just depends on what the content is. So, so we're all close nine to 14. That's, that's mm -hmm. all close. What about, what about you, Mike? I'm Michael, I think closer to flat. <laughs> <laughs> do you I'm even not... use your, do you even use your theater anymore, Michael? What theater? <laughs> 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 no, I, I I don't I really don't know, you know. So I couldn't tell you. It's bad. My I tell people my theater probably is the least dialed in system out there because I'm constantly unhooking and hooking. One day, you know, I want to have two different rooms, one that I can enjoy and never touch unless I'm upgrading myself, and then one room or maybe it's a a studio down the block that I'm renting out or something when this thing, you know, gets to where it could fund something like that so that I could just rip apart that room and not have to worry about my own. Cause I'm always changed. Like I have a AVM 70 in there. I got to undo mine, hook it up, calibrate it, do its thing, box it back up, ship it back to audio advice, put mine back in. And then there may be something else that, you know, it's got to take its place in a little while to, to do you think it. if you set up another room like you got a spare bedroom now that your kids are getting older i'm sure if you mm -hmm. made another home theater in there would it would it it wouldn't have the same appeal per se because it's not your home theater i suppose yeah, but I, I don't know it's it's they're only like 12 foot by 12 foot i mean they're mm -hmm. not big rooms, so that'd be hard to do a theater in there so i'm mm -hmm. not sure yeah there's not I've, I've been doing some stuff out in the living room because two-thirds of my audience don't have a dedicated theater room 
So sure. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. well, that kind of, you know, might be some content that a lot of people are connecting. And, and when I made those videos, people are saying, man, thank you so much for doing one in your living room. Cause that's what I've got. That mm-hmm. gives me some ideas of how to set it up and, and so forth. So, um, there was a comment. Oh, here's a question for you, Scott. Uh, Nicholas says, what is newbie using in his two channel room? Like your preamp and your amp that your amp rack, what's going on in there? Oh, I don't have in, a, in a, uh, yeah, in the RTJ room, I'm using, uh, the, the setup comes with two um, amps for the subs, two um, 2,400 by two amps, so each of the 18C, 2,400 watt, and then the center sections, the 410s for the mids and highs, is, I'm using a Cherry um, King version, 400 by two, and then that feeds through, I source through a Blue Sounds, mm-hmm. through a SM, SL, SU9, high-res DAC, and then um, that goes into a Parasound P6. So that's why I'm streaming. That's how I do all my streaming music. And then I also have a project carbon turntable that I go through the Parasound with. But that's, yeah, yeah, that's, and all that's running off a 20 amp breaker. And as long as we don't go above 83 in the volume control, you won't blow the breaker in that room. I'm going to, I'm going to go that number to the, to the single digit. Yeah. (laughs) I have a hell. I thought it's funny. So we're doing some content. We're filming, getting people's reaction. And Jay came over. He's a DJ. And a pretty big DJ. I mean, he's done some DJs for big, big, high client, you know. So he's over there hanging out. And Scott's like, I, he, he, his term is, I'm going to hit him. And so that, that means get the camera ready. So I got the camera ready. I'm filming him. And it's like, dun, 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 dun. it's doing centipede. And it's like, it's on the build up. You're getting ready for the drop. And it's like, who? And the whole place goes black. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and, uh, oh, man. that's a great video though so and then we had to change he's like man i was one one notch above where i should have been <laughs> yeah well because I, I i told jeff because he's uh uh because jeff was there that's a, that's a buddy of jeff's too and i said i'm gonna go up to 84 for him because he's a dj and he mm-hmm. he said he likes his bass as soon as i have i like should have stayed at 83 <laughs> that's right so the guy was like, dude, I was waiting for the bass to drop. I was excited. And we're all just sat in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so F- Fred wins the uh, comment of the night. He says, uh, edge of tomorrow feels like the edge of tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> for sure, man. This, some people, Love. subwoofers, have felt the edge of tomorrow during that and not come back. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Vivek, thank you so much for the 179. I'm not sure what uh, currency that is. He says, new LG Cinebeam. HU810 PW versus the used Sony VPL VM550ES. Number one question. Do y'all know what either one of those are? I'm not familiar with those models. LG. The 810 PW is probably some type of refresh. Okay. So take a look at that one. I'll pull up the Sony. Was it Sony Uh, VM550? So what was the model of the LG you had in your theater that you started with? A few it years would have ago? been something I'm... very similar to this. Uh, was it this? Not the was same. it the same? No, it wasn't the same. No, it might be. That's, it looks the same. It looks the same. All right, I will share my screen. I'm so gonna I'll go show back you. to our forum post on that. And see if that's the same LG. Okay, I'll show you what the projector. So it's 1800 lumens. 350,000 to one contrast. Yeah, ignore the contrast on that. That doesn't mean. Well, anything. I'm just sharing, man. Just sharing. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. They got this thing all wiped out. Um, it's a light output, 1800. Expand all at the top. There we go. What do you want to see? So yours was the 810, Ryan, looking back at forum posts, but I. I don't know if it was PW or not. I don't know if that's the same ending suffix or not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. What's the price point of this Sony? PW. He said it's used, so I guess he's he's probably can get a good deal on it. So he's looking at like a three thousand, two thousand, or three thousand dollar price point. Mm-hmm. Epson fifty fifty or fifty forty. Yeah, well, that, well, that six feet fifty probably. That LG, I'm thinking it's the same model based on some old forum posts a couple years back, Ryan. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same model you had, and nobody was real excited about that one. 
The contrast was crunchy. It it tried to use some dynamic. <laughs> crunchy. It tried to use some dynamic. And that basic crunchy, crunchy image. Oh, <laughs> I have never heard contrast as described as crunchy. And, and, and I've never heard face described as wet either. No, but a, that's now a universally described term. I mean, that's industry standard pointed, now. Okay. You don't know how crunchy. Many times we have talked about wet base all weekend. <laughs> People were slipping on wet base. Uh, yeah, it was wild. In my opinion, I would go with a used Epson. That's what I would do. Sony's, the older Sony's are subject to a blue shift due to condensation on the pan over repeated heat up and cool down cycles. And they can actually start to shift and color shift into the blue range. So I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, I mean... It, that's probably going to happen if it hasn't already started on that Sony. And I'm not a huge fan of the LG. You've heard us, if you've been on this channel a while, you've probably heard us talk numerous yeah. times about the Epsons. So I would do an Epson. Mm -hmm. You get a used 50-40 or 50-50 for a thousand bucks. Yeah. 50-40 for a thousand. Your used 50-50 is probably going to cost you 2,000, 2,300, yeah. something like that. US, I don't know what currency he's in, so I don't know what country he's in. Sure. Maybe... Maybe I guess that's, that's true. Wait, I'll, I'll take a look. Let me see. Oh, I can't copy that. Well, uh, let me see. I might be able to copy it over here. Contrast yeah. is crunchy. Let's so see. crunchy in the terms of like brittle. Like when we were watching Lord of the Rings. Brittle. Yeah. What? So fake that it's 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 trying too hard. Their processing algorithm they're using for the contrast enhancements because at the at the end of the day, it's like it's not very good contrast numbers. So they're doing some artificial enhancement. And it yeah. just, it looked poor across the board. Like, I didn't like anything it was doing with the contrast. Yeah, but it had more uh, problems than that. I, I guess you were able to look past image the... Image uniformity dual... issue, red sparkle. It had... Yeah. It had I, problems. It was a sharp image, but that's about the only thing you could really say for it. The HDR, Matt, the HDR performance was poor. No, no, didn't mean to SDR do that. performance was poor. It was just not a... It <laughs> didn't have a lot of uh, good things to say about no. it, did we? No. Other than that, though, it was okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. So what about what about the uh, NX5 for around three grand? Would that be uh, good or? I mean, it would be good. NX5s are good projectors. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're great projectors. Okay. Be prepared to be buying bulbs about every thousand hours or fifteen hundred hours, though, because they lose depends, so much lumens. Depends on yeah. how sensitive you are to that. I mean, I noticed after a few hundred hours of light law or bulb usage. <laughs> On my NX7. Yeah, for sure. Mike has a question here. He says, appreciate the $2 super chat. Golden Air Triton 5s uh, versus the Klipsch RP8000F version 2. Struggling to decide, running off an older Pioneer SC97 AVR. Mike, are these new or are you buying used? <clears throat> Let us know in the chat, buddy. I mean, I... I just always struggle telling somebody what they should buy and because they're going to mm -hmm. be two completely different sounds. Mm -hmm. um, my, my biggest question is, have you heard the, the golden ear? Have you heard it the clips? Used. Okay. Let us know if you've heard so each one of them. What do you golden think about ear them? is going to use an MT. Are they not? The Triton fives is the model number. So golden ear has a folded ribbon, two yes. six inch drivers. It's a two way design. So 90 dB sensitivity. So that's going to be... And it's going to have active woofers? Is that what those are? It says it has radiators. Four 8-inch infrasonic planar sub-bass radiators. So they're not active in that case. They're actually just basically like a that's... cone without a magnet structure or motor on it. And that's it just... strange. Yeah, usually they got at least one active with a couple radiators, right? That doesn't look like it in the cutaway design on the website at Crutchfield. They have a, a clear illustration yeah. of what it looks like. They're just passing radio. So it's radio. got one AMT, two six-inch mid and base drivers, and then the four-inch radiators. So the radiators are being driven two or four eight-inch radiators are being driven off two six-inch six drivers. Inch just, that seems just, a little strange, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that seems very strange. And then my other concern is, is that this looks like just a two-way crossover. Like, it does say two-way on Crutchfield. 
So it's probably gonna have some crunchy bass then. <laughs> <laughs> that's I. That's just a bizarre design to me. Interesting. That's really weird. And they say it gets down to forty hertz. This thing at Crutchfield is twenty six hertz. Mm -hmm. No way. But it's a little okay. optimistic. So he says he sold his Golden Ear Triton 2s that he had for 10 years, but I'm looking to upgrade and not sure if I want to stay with Golden Ear or jump into Klipsch. Triton 2. Well, did you like the Triton 2s? Yeah, but the Triton 2s have actual base drivers mm. if they're the same as the Triton 2 Pluses. I mean, the Triton 2 Pluses have two 7 by 10 inch base drivers, two four and a half inch mids, and then one AMT. So they're a yeah. true three way. This is I don't know what this is. I don't know. This is weird. I'm gonna pass. I don't have any experience with those golden air speakers. And I'd probably have heard the clip speakers, but most people probably have too. So I try to compare what you want to heard one. If you want an AMT <laughs> is look for used Martin Logan 60 XTs or 60 XDIs. I think they're going to poo-poo all over these. If I remember right, Michael, those 60 XTs were one of your favorite speakers. I really enjoy them, and I really like the F200s. So that have They're replaced. really good. I love the mid-range. The mid-range is like just that. Mm. I mean, they've got good bass response because they've got the triple aids. But just the mid range is just really, really done well with that ribbon tweeter. And I think that was the first time I had heard of or a fold. Is it called folded ribbon? I think it's what they call yes. it. Yes. Yes. Folded motion. I mean, ribbon. it's a planar. It's a planar. It's a planar magnetic. Yeah. yeah. And so that I think that was the first time I'd ever heard one. I'm like, whoa, this is quite different than what I'm used to hearing. You know, I always like my clips, but I'm like, this is different, man. This is really, really good. So I need to do some A-B comparisons, like a lot, just to figure out which direction I want to go. Because I'm, my brain tells me I'm leaning towards the the Martin Logans, but we'll see. But I want to do some side by sides, uh, quite a bit. To but I say that specifically because I think you're going to have a better experience with that over. And this isn't knocking mm -hmm. down Golden Ear, just whatever that design is. I don't. The radiators is just kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So the radiators, radiators can be good. They can. I'm just saying that design is yeah. just bizarre to me. It is a little odd. Any I other know, comments on Golden that? Air can almost have like a cult following though. I know there's a lot of people that really like them. So yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, honestly, so does clips. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. They'll, they'll pull out the pitchforks, man. So, and I think that's, that can be said of a lot of brands, you know. I mean, people that really I've they, experienced they, multiple golden there, but not those. But that sounds like a weird design that you have four passive radiators with, with no really ice driver. That, yeah. that seems very strange to me. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder what they're trying to accomplish with that. Like what the goal is to make it look like there's more <laughs> sub drivers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Cool deal. Now, before we jump into like, I know we got a bunch of questions. We've got another super chat. Um, I don't want to keep Scott on the hook. You're welcome to hang out as long as you want, Scott. But yeah, I hang out uh, for like another 10 more minutes. I got my little one to bed. So literally just do a Hey guys, thanks yeah. so much. Peace out. And then just drop out whenever you need. No, to. I'm just leaving, man. I'm not. No, no <laughs> warning. <laughs> well, like, yeah. Well, just like a broken water pipe. Just, yep. I'm out of here. Gone. Slept yeah. on some what base and I'm out of here. <laughs> you like that when we text you at dinner the other night, Ryan, for your, I looked at oh, the yeah. dictionary, man. We, I didn't see the info in there. Mm. It was funny. We were trying to describe like, what, what does Ryan mean with, when he says wet base? And none of us really knew. We kind of had an idea. And we're, so I was like, Ryan, can you give me a working definition that I can add to Wikipedia? Did it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Why like, don't you read it? Why don't you read it to the crowd, Michael? So I, everybody it. can be enlightened. <laughs> all right so let's go back here let's we're all sitting over these delicious pizzas and michael's reading this to us so it was, it was quite entertaining mm. <laughs> all right so, so here's the day I, I told him i said um we're at dinner debating what wet base means can you provide a working definition and so ryan laughs and he says wet base 
is the low end frequency that fills in the crevices that dry bass leaves behind. <laughs> it's the thing that fills in the void and brings everything together. Think of it like having a bunch of different shaped uh, blocks. You can't fill the cracks in between unless you fill it with liquid, which makes it totally full. Hence, wet base. <laughs> so I new still, trouble for lines would be uh, wet base certified. Not a good. <laughs> Instead of like a THX label or a yeah. rating, <laughs> wet base. I need to market that. I yeah, that could be a lucrative <laughs> income right there. You know what's funny is, um, who made your sign, Scott? Was that um, Mark? In the, in the, yeah, Mark did. Yeah. So let me, I'm going to go find that real quick. Let's go to your channel. And it's funny too, is because we were straightening up the house and we spilled some water on the floor. My, so my six year old was down there wiping it right by the sign. So I took the picture, put it on Facebook. I said, that's right. Clean up daddy's wet base. Honey, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this may be a small, oh man, let me see if I can find a bigger picture of just. Next that. time I see Ryan, I got to have him sign that sign. There we go. Oh, I found it. All right, check this out. So <laughs> Mark made this amazing sign, dude, and it's literally in their living room. Why um, is it in their living room? It was just for the event. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the bedroom tonight. I mean in the <laughs> theater. In the theater. <laughs> All right, here it is. Boom. Caution, wet base. Nice. Down, down at the bottom. I mean, this thing's legit. It's like made out of aluminum. Um, it's, it's like a... Uh, I don't know, like a tent shape. So it's, I think it's got the same thing on both sides. JTR logo at the bottom. Then it says seven cap club. <laughs> and it's seven's got S E the number seven E N cap club. I love it, man. Just, just waiting uh, on my leather jacket for Ryan. That's all. And then I'm good to go. I'm trying to <laughs> think about that. I love it, man. <laughs> That's fun, dude. But yeah, so one thing I hope you guys are seeing is that, when we get together, whether it's at M wave, whether it's Jonathan's house, Ryan, if he's doing something, Scott, uh, the guys in Kansas city, whether it's Wisconsin, get togethers, man, is where we just build community, have a lot of fun, share some laughs, enjoy some content together and just share the passion that we have for movies and music and uh, just have a great time. Yeah, I couldn't so. trust the people enough. Michael is that everybody's like, I want to have people over, but I don't have a setup like you or a setup like him. I was like, dude, nobody cares. Yep. Literally don't do that. I want to come to your house, order me a pizza, give me a cold beer. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, show me your demo clips, show yeah. me your room, show you like, I, you know. Yep. It, oh. And people, people have done that to me. They say, Michael, you know, I'd love to have you come over and, you know, I'm here local, come over and check mine out. I'm, I'm glad to, Yeah. you know, I want to hear your story. I want to hear your passion and, there was a gentleman I was speaking to um, that he he was in a demo. He's at Mark's house, and he just looked over at me. He said, "Man, he's like, I feel. I don't think he said ashamed, but he was like, man, I feel kind of weird. I've got a Bose soundbar. I said, bro, nothing wrong with that. You know, that's that's great. I, he said, I got to go home and sell some stuff and buy some stuff though, because <laughs> he he never experienced anything like a movie theater like that in a home." And the cool thing is, is that's the purpose of doing home theater tours. The purpose of the videos that I'm going to share about Scott's place is just gives you some ideas. You know, what can you do? And what's great about Scott's setup is how big is your room? It's not huge. No, my theater, no, it's small. Like, even though it's oddly shaped, like 14 by 16 feet, you know, yeah. and that's ma maxing it out. Yeah. It's and you've, got, you've got short ceilings, probably eight foot, maybe yeah, less. Just, just, just under. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's not a big room. It's not and in it. Like you said, it's odd shaped room right to Scott's right. Like back this way. Point that way, Scott. Top right. Yeah, there you go. So you might back not can there. see it, but but there's a what's behind there. There's something that you can't physically move, right? It's full of gold bars, Michael. The whole room <laughs> is full of gold bars. That's how I buy subwoofers and gold nuggets. But oh no, that's I, I got a sub pump for our seepage and I, I got a there's a water main in there. Yeah, yeah, so he can't move that. And so his seats are, you know, they can't go any further over. The subwoofer can't be there. And so we all have limitations in a room. Jonathan had a big pole and, you know, he eventually moved it. But I mean, you live with that pole kind of in your way for a long time. He, he says he just, he eventually just moved it over like a sub little project. <laughs> he 
<laughs> did, but you know, we all have limitations in a room, but the, the, hopefully what you're seeing through my channel, through these guys' homes and the home theater tours we do is use what you have, enjoy it, build a set. And I love Scott's heart. He always would ask people, he's like, do you like, does your setup bring you happiness? Doesn't matter what that looks like. Doesn't matter if it's a, a 5.1, a 9.1, if you got JTR, if you got clips, you got golden ear, whatever. Does it bring you enjoyment? Does it help you to de-stress at the end of the week? Um, you've had a rough day and you go in your, your living room or bedroom or theater room. Does it help you to kind of just check out for a little bit and just kind of enjoy a movie or enjoy music? Every friend. one of those guys, you know, that I asked, they're like, oh, dude, I, I absolutely love it. I said, good. I love mine. You love yours. We're both winning at the hobby. I love so it. Even if you don't mention your equipment, if you, I'm if sorry. I can't wait to go watch the new release at my house, yeah, then, then, then you're doing it right. Yeah. I love that. We're both winning, man. That's yeah, a bit that's even, man. And everybody, dude, I've been in so many theaters that are so much nicer than mine. They don't make me enjoy mine less. Of course, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm like, well, that's that's cool, but can I still <laughs> go home and have a good time? Yeah, I love it, man. Ike, you're not right, man. He said y'all made Jonathan move his dancing pole. <laughs> the Kansas City group has a bad influence on each other. Yeah, yeah. But that was Jonathan's own doing. He did that to himself. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to know, Scott, before you go, I know you said you're going to take off your soon. Have you ever measured, like objectively measured what's happening in your yard outside or anything? Like how many DB you're getting in the front yard or the backyard or the deck or whatever else? No, well, what I what I have done, though, is that the term lab meter that I've used in the theater, I've set it upstairs on the couch right above the room, and it did register at 120 upstairs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's stuff moving nothing up like getting yeah. reference in yes. rooms adjacent in to another the room yeah so uh, i crank the movie up and then i go upstairs on the sofa and listen to it yeah so so here, yeah, here's I, a I haven't done anything outside there was a couple guys that mentioned like in the abs forums they put some posts that they were outside during the demos and they're like we're surprised how tight and clean the bass sounded outside of the house <laughs> yeah <laughs> And he goes, and he has a well built house because like nothing was falling off of his house. So, yeah. but I honestly, I'd have to have like a buddy over or something because I'd be fearful to run my system that hard and not be present. Yeah. You know, because of a driver flies out, something catches on fire. That, I mean, that would be my luck. The you fact know? that these are actual worries of what's going on in your theater <laughs> at these levels is concerning. The only thing, the only saving grace, though, is there'd be so much wet base it'd put the fire out. Right mm -hmm. away. Right away. <laughs> so at one point, um, I don't think it was during the event, um, but he makes a fun. We're in the basement in the theater room. And he, he calls Cat. He's like, hey, where are you at? I'm upstairs. Can you man the picture frames and just kind of I'm about to crank it up. All right, thanks. Nice. Love you. Bye. That was the night before the get together because we didn't take it all down because I learned a very expensive lesson that we don't buy our picture frames from Walmart. We buy them from Target, and that is a double the cost right there. So, what I thought was only a fifty dollars mistake ended up being like a hundred dollars mistake. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so. And in his own theater room, it, all the picture frames are screwed into the. Oh wall. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, legit. So, well, Scott, it was seriously. It, we had so much fun. Your hospitality is just, you know, second to none. You've got a great event going on. You're doing this annually. Um, yeah, you I have so many people asking if you were coming back for the next one. You know, and I, I know you, you got a crazy schedule yourself. It. And I said, dude, that is completely yeah. up to him. But uh, yeah, I'm up to. you know, only I, if I get the princess suite again, because that was that was nice. I, I did a, get the princess suite with the street view, and I don't give that to anybody. So you know. <laughs> But. I did. The walls are pink, man. It was cozy in there, man. It was really nice. I had to sleep sideways, like at an angle, because the bed's a little short for me. But man, it, it I fit perfect sideways. <laughs> and then her, that teddy bear had a lot of drool in it. You could have not did that. Oh, <laughs> no. I brought. I did bring my own pillow though. Yeah, so. yeah I, I seen that. Yeah. And I made my bed every day. So. Yeah, you did. Well, that's in good practice. We all do around here. Yeah, man. I try, I try to... <laughs> no, but y'all are y'all great hosts, man. We had a blast. Um, we got to hang out with Jeff Permanian, with JTR and RTJ. Mark Seaton was there, which was great. Yeah, and Mark's been at the last few ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and me and Mark are buddies. Me and, yeah. me and Jeff are buddies, so it's nice yeah. having those 
the 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 intelligence that both of those guys 100%. carry. You know, it literally talking to those guys when they're talking about like a design or a room and that, you know, everybody just kind of just touches up. Yeah, and just like, you know, that's a really good time to just take a listen and, and learn something. Oh yeah. And it was really cool seeing them. I mean, they've been friends for like over 20 years. Technically, they're competitors. I mean, they both make, you know, really great speakers as well as subwoofers. And but yet they come together at an event and they celebrate the hobby together. And I think they represent what it should be and how it should be, you know, that there's plenty of plenty of customers for us all. Um and just share the passion, man. It's not about us versus them. Same thing in the content creation. It's like, I want to, I was telling Scott, I, I want to help build and help out anybody that's wanting to either get into content creation or already has a channel. I don't care if you've got a small channel, 2000 subscribers, a thousand. I'm an open book. I'm glad to help out any way that I can. Um, but it was just a great time hanging out with you, Johnny in the chat. He says, youth man is Scott. Um, Living room floor was shaking yesterday. Me and Tony uh, was like, is that coming from Scott's home theater room? It was great. I just hope his house stays up. Wow, the bass was great. It absolutely was, man. Thanks, super, Johnny. Super I appreciate fun. it. That was, that was the goal, sir. Yeah. But next year, I need to plan this more around Ryan and Jonathan's schedule. Hopefully, get those guys up just, just for be the day. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then... You know, we can all because usually with the events, I like to get about half of the people that have been here before, and then a half just because yeah. then I don't have to worry about entertaining everybody because everybody just kind of entertains each other at that point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like having Tony from here and and, and uh, Mark and stuff and Nick, you know, they've met these guys that like M Wave and stuff, so they gravitate towards them and ask them questions and stuff sure. like that. So, and, and you're, you're like a like a celebrity around here, Michael. What's that? <laughs> did, did you like it's funny I'll, I'll tell the story quick and then i gotta go we're at the restaurant and like this this guy was serving us the pizza and he's like hey did you guys have a great time and i was like yeah man i said dude you don't know who we're here with he's like no i was like dude that's a celebrity he's like really he's like who are you i was like that is number three janitor in the country that is youth man we flew him in to take care of all of our schools man the, <laughs> he got a big everybody got a pretty good camera. oh we were laughing so hard man we had yeah. a great time though well cool scott man i love you appreciate you brother you hey man Kat, nice hanging amazing. out with you guys all good see you again, scott. what's up with all this time flying by michael you were here for three days this hour just flew by now i know why you guys get stuck on here for three hours at night mm -hmm. so no, i'm gonna no. get her to bed and then i'll probably be back on in about a half hour and see how you boys finish up all right okay. sounds I good cool, man. By the event good. Peace guys. see you yep Cool, man. Scott's a great dude. I just kicked him out. <laughs> Didn't uh, want he's to got a great setup. And as you guys can just see, man, he's just a fun guy. He's just got a big heart. He has a big heart for the community. And um he needs to get some shirts on his wash out though. You his, cut out, Ryan. Yeah. Say it again. He needs to get some shirts that aren't as washed out though. <laughs> sure. We gotta work on his lighting. How about that? I saw another super chat come in. <laughs> Out real quick, Nicholas, a couple, I think. Three dollars super chat. He says, "What do y'all think of Anthem STR separates?" My question, if Nicholas is still here, is why do you think you need separates, mm -hmm. and what is the rest of your system? I don't like answering these questions without having more information on what's going on. Yeah, he answers. I, mean, the I think Anthem's great. I think Anthem's great. I think uh, they've, to be fully transparent, they've had a little bit of a troubled history recently with some of their software issues that have been going on. Uh, but uh, people like them. It Their room correction did very well at M-Wave. People liked it. But Nicholas, if you're still here, why do you think you need separates? And what is in your system? What speakers? What's going on? You guys got anything? I haven't had any experience with the STR series myself. I've only reviewed the MRX 1140, I think it was. 11, mm -hmm. 1120, 1140, I think it was 1140. But that was four years ago, and I, I can't even say I just got in the Anthem AVM 70. I've had it for four months, I think. So I need to get that. 
um, reviewed, get that set up. That's another thing I've got to take my set of apart, put that in there and uh, spend some time with it. But I'm looking forward to it for sure. I know a lot of guys that have some of the Avium series, but I don't know anybody that owns the STR series. So, yeah, one of the local guys has one of the Anthem uh, AVRs. No separates around here that I know of. It's a nice, mm -hmm. it's a nice little AVR. Um, I think their auto EQ is fine. I don't know that it's better or worse than some of the other competitors in that realm. The, mm -hmm. the display is really nice. Anthem has those really nice big LCDs which show mm -hmm. the volume and the display stats on there, and their software is nice as far as getting in there and kind of seeing what you're doing with auto EQ and so forth. Uh, I don't have any complaints against them, but I don't have any experience with their STR processors. Or I'd like to point out what you did there was you just kind of talked about some niceties of the product. It wasn't really, there's not really anything that sets it apart from anybody. So I think we're kind of to a point now that you buy or the differentiator of going one direction or another is based on some type of feature or something that you want or need in your system. And whatever mm -hmm. that is dictates your path. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of the point that we're at now. And I think the Rumi Q kind of told us that if you're just needing a type of Rumi Q and you're not getting into a granular level, I think they all do a pretty good job, including Odyssey. Uh, but if you're trying to do specific things and you have a, maybe a more difficult room or you're trying to get more granular or really trying to push things to the limit, there's other things that you may want, depending. Chris, appreciate the photo of Super Chat. He did his earlier, and I kind of kept scrolling and starring, and I'm coming back to it. He said if he ever makes it to Newbie's Pad, he'll bring some queso, a mountain bunch of cards. A mountain bunch of cards. What is that? Cards Against Humanity. It's a game. Oh, okay. I got you. So a mountain bunch against the cards of humanity or both. Um, I would love for you to come in. I think you'd really, really enjoy it. So he does this once a year. Another thing that we didn't get a chance to mention, I forgot about it, was he and Kat are going to start a podcast in October. Yeah, she gets I heard about that. Trip. So I'm excited about that. I said, man, dude, I, I can sit there and listen to, to Newbie, man. They're going to have some funny conversations. It's it's not just about audio. It'll be about audio. It'll be about home theater, but it'll also be about just basically everything that they're interested in. And so it'll kind of be just a multitude of things. Um, but I think there'll be some, some pretty good comedy relief there. So scrolling back up just to make sure i didn't miss any i'd like other. to hear more about scott's plumbing stories dude oh so okay speaking of that again so we talked a lot about social media while i was there and they were asking about youtube and this and that and and he's like you know i've got so many things that and he posts them on facebook a lot of times and i said dude you totally should be recording this. And he says he records a lot of it, but it's, he just sends it to friends and stuff. He's like, dude, you ain't gonna believe this crap. Yeah, they should call the crap. podcast full of shit and then go from there. <laughs> so for anybody that I doesn't know, Scott is a plumber as a profession. Yeah. So that's why I said that. Yeah. He works on a lot of commercial building, mm -hmm. big, you know, um, big, big kind of things other than just residential but he comes into some crazy setups and, and kind of some, he, oh, he told me that I can't believe it. And I think he was serious. He's like, yeah, he's like, if I start filming this and do it like on TikTok, he said, I'll just film it. I'll like literally walk into a pipe that's busted just because <laughs> like, you're nasty, man. That's crazy. But that sounds like something that he would do. So yep, he's, it does. He's, uh, he might start a, a YouTube channel or at least a, a TikTok and, do some vertical content. So I was showing him how that would be really easy. Film with your phone. You can edit with your phone, upload it in a few minutes and, and uh, just have some fun, but also maybe we should ask him if he wants to sponsor the Brown note challenge at next year's M wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Too funny, man. Too funny. Cool. Well, Jonathan, was it your, did you have a, a topic or something that you wanted to cover tonight or was it Ryan? I'm, no, I know I was we're going to do Jonathan's. We both had ideas, but okay. I think Jonathan actually mentioned his at last week's stream. Yeah. So Yeah, so I don't think it has to be real formal, and you guys can input too, but sure. we, we just had a lot of comments in the chat, and then on the side even, like PMs and Discord and AVS messages where people kind of asked, like, all right, how do you set up gain on an external amplifier? I don't know how to do that, or I don't really understand it. I want to understand it better. 
you know, that kind of thing. And we've, we've kind of talked about it a little bit on the podcast over the last few months, last six months, year, whatever it's been, but yeah. they kind of, they kind of wanted just another overview on it. So it's cause I was kind of thinking about that. I was sort of thinking like we could come up with a kind of a, a, a few examples of things that aren't normally correct, but people do it anyway, cause they don't know any better and kind of just give an overview of how to do it right. So I have a couple school teacher type examples here. Let me grab them. There you go. Bring it on, man. So here is a Behringer NX 3000. It's a typical amp. I've got a crown on the ground too. They're both the same way. These are gain input attenuators. Everyone calls them gain knobs or even some people think they're volume knobs. They're not that. So first and foremost, I want to explain to your audience that you can get full power out of this amplifier with the gain knob set at the lowest level. It's a, it's a gain matching structure. This is called an input attenuator, a gain input attenuator, not a, not a gain knob. So that's the official title of it. If you have a lot of voltage coming in, you need less um, mm -hmm. on this knob. So your indent should, your, your device should go counterclockwise to the leftmost position. If right. you have weak voltage coming out of your AVR, then you'd want to match your gain by raising the gain attenuation knob. And so it's a, it's like a, it's a balancing act or a, or a handshake. This does not mean automatically that you have to, if you want full power to the amp, you got to go to max volume. It's just not true. Mm -hmm. Say you had, uh, there's a, there's an input voltage sensitivity on all these amplifiers and you can look it up to get the right number. And if you put in max voltage on the input attenuate on that input voltage line, you do not need to go anywhere near full volume on this gain attenuator knob to get full volume. So I now, want to make that crystal clear. Before you move on, I think it's very important too to mention that if your amp does not have attenuator knobs and you get amps that have different voltage sensitivities, you can get yourself into a bit of a conundrum. So this is a heavier beast. It's an old iron crown. Same sort of thing, right? Right. It has in gain input attenuators. And yes, it does get louder as you turn it up, but it's not meant to be a volume knob. So when you're setting up your, your amplifier, you're going to take a bunch of uh, discs that I have here in front of me have examples for checking your SPL. So we've got the Spears and Monsell disc. It has on disc three uh, test tones. The WOW Disney disc has test tones. These ultimate DVD collection that are getting old now, but they have test tones. The Dolby Atmos discs have test tones. What you want to do is set your if you're if you're starting up from scratch with like your main speaker setup, put your gain at about one third on your amp to start. You want your SPL trims on your channel level. So if you go into your receiver or your pre-pro, lower your channel level trims down to like negative eight, negative ten, negative six, and that type of range. And then use your input and attenuator knobs to get up to that 75 dB typical for like retail type equipment. I'm, I made a little list on AVS forum to kind of get more input, but like your Denon, your Rance, your Onkyo, your Yamaha, like your commercial type retail AVRs, they have an internal offset. So you're going to you're going to take your main listening volume and this there's a lot of steps here and I don't want to make it complicated. I'm trying to water it down or, or, or make it easy to understand. You're going to take your main listening volume, that's your overall volume. You're going to set that to zero. If it's set to relative, it would be zero. If it's set to absolute, it would be typically like 80. Um, so let me, let me back up a step for that. If your receiver, as you turn up the volume, goes from negative, say, negative 30 to zero type range or negative 60 to zero type range, then that is set up to be a reference volume scale. I had to look at my note to make sure I had it right. And if it goes from like zero to 98, for instance, then that's an absolute volume scale. THX reference is 85 dB average dialogue, average content, 105 dB peaks, 115 dB peaks for the subwoofers. So speakers are 105. All your speakers are supposed to be hitting 105 at zero as a, as a full peak, like full signal, zero dBFS at your main listening position should be 105 from every speaker. And from the subwoofers, 115. That's defined as THX reference. That's meant to make so it's, there's a standard at all the theaters that they can adjust the sound to. Your receiver, if you buy an off-the-shelf retail consumer receiver, it has an internal offset. 
and they make it 75 dB that you're going to set your test tones to. So you turn your main listening volume to zero or 80, depending on which way your volume is set up. And then you set your test tones to 75. And that 75 has that tend to be offset. So you're really at 85. And the reason they did that offset is because if you had like a tone theater in box set up or maybe some inexpensive or older speakers, you can actually blow a speaker with 85 dB test tones. And the receiver companies just didn't even want to fight that. And also 85 dB sounds kind of loud as a test tone. So they just did that 10 dB offset. As they're setting it up, nobody's going to accuse them of blowing their speakers or anything at 75 dB. So that's why the offset's there. I hear a lot of people trying to set their gain. I went to 85 dB because that's what THX references. Not with your not with your consumer product. It's going to be 75 dB. Now, Ryan's got the Storm Audio. And Ryan, correct me if I'm not right here, but I think yours is 85 dB for your test tones. Because mm -hmm. you do not have that internal offset. No. So if you have kind of more of a boutique expensive receiver, they're probably going to be more in line with like THX reference without having that thing because they're not going to be matched to cheap or inexpensive speakers that might be damaged. Well, the expectation so, too is that a lot of times with those more boutique products that they're going to be professionally calibrated. Custom installed, that yeah. kind of thing. Absolutely. So, so depending on what your product is, you can look this up online, figure out what your test tone is supposed to be made. And that's going to help you set your level. So typically you want your channel trim levels to be negative. So the range on most products is negative 12 to positive 12. That's for the commercial retail type side. <clears throat> you, want your, you want your gain trims to be on your on individual channels negative. And, and for main speakers, it probably doesn't matter too much how far negative. You do want to keep in mind that you're, if you're listening to THX reference at your zero and you say your EQ is bumping your channel trims at 150 hertz by 9 dB or something, like Odyssey, for instance, can bump up by 9 dB. You want to have that little bit of headroom so that you're not doing what's called input clipping or, or source clipping. Mm -hmm. So that would be a reason to keep your trims low. If you're not going to play to reference, say you only played a negative 10 or a negative 15, it just doesn't even matter because you're not going to be in the ballpark of even mattering about or worrying about any of this stuff. But let's say you do want to have like THX cinema. You want to have it as loud as your commercial premium cinema. Maybe you want your volume levels, maybe you want your channel levels to be all like negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12 to kind of give you room to have some EQ applied. If you're not applying EQ, it doesn't matter if you don't go above zero. You can go all the way to zero. So negative 12 to zero is your range. You use your amp attenu gain attenuator knobs, put them at like maybe a third, and then use the SPL trim to kind of figure out how to get those to land. And I like negative 6, negative 8 type territory. Mm -hmm. You do not have to have... If you have a four channel amplifier, if you have a two channel amplifier, the gain knobs do not have to be, input attenuator knobs do not have to be matched. They can be disparate. Your channel levels, your channel trims can be disparate. I've heard people say like, well, I need to match all my channels so it'd be the same volume and I put them all at negative six. No, that's not right either because each channel is gonna be different because it's a slightly different distance from your seat. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing is you know, maybe three foot further than this one to my main listing position. It's going to require more power to drive this one to the same SPL level. So you can't expect that your channel trims will be the same. They'll all be different, just like your distances will be different. And that's okay. Um, but when you're measuring it with an SPL meter, you want that to be the same. The yes. overall volume. Yes. So but at my main listening the position, we are, are going to be different. Right. I'm going through every channel, just down the list, and I'm making sure they're all 75 dB at my seat. That's what you want to do from your main listening position. So I'm going to look through my notes here and see if we missed any topics that I kind of wanted to cover. Um, we were gonna, I was going to mention about subwoofers. Subwoofers are a little bit different altogether. So where I had talked about with main speakers, with channel levels, how you had a little bit of grace there, as long as you're not going to zero volume, you could go all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with your subwoofer. And the reason you can't do that with your subwoofer level is because all the speakers, if you're using a crossover frequency for a crossover setting for your speakers, say you're crossing them at 80 hertz, you're crossing them at 90 hertz or 60 hertz or whatever, everything below that crossover point is getting redirected to your subs. And when that redirection happens, it sums. So the more speakers you have, the more bass is getting redirected to your subwoofers. Well, the subwoofers are already set to like go up to zero. If you're redirecting bass from 15 other speakers, they're like I am. I think the math basically says that I would be redirecting about 7 dB worth of bass to my subwoofers from my crossover points to my speakers. So that means I shouldn't go any higher than negative 7 on my subwoofer trims or I risk doing input clipping to my subwoofers up front. 
-hmm. So I try to shoot for negative and, and you're doing the same way. You're doing your game matching. When I'm trying to get the 75 dB for my subs, I try to make sure that I'm at least negative eight or below on my system because I have 15 speakers. If you have a 5.1 or 7.1, typically they'll say it's more like three dB that you have to worry about being redirected. So you're talking about, Hey, I can back that. I have from negative three to negative 12. I can put it, I can put a negative four, negative five, negative six, that type of thing. Um, this just allows you to not to send a clip signal to the, to the amplifier. And what's a clip signal? A sine wave looks like this, right? It's up and down and it's nice rounded gradual humps. A clip signal looks like this. It's squared off at the top and bottom because you've exceeded the allowance of that sound of that, of that wave. And that, that clip signal actually can be damaging to your amplifier. It can be damaging to your speakers. It's not a good thing to do. When you see the clip light on your amplifier, it could be either an input clip, like you're sending a signal that's too hot, it's clipping it at the source, or it could be an output clip. Your amplifier simply doesn't have the power to drive what you're asking it to drive. Yeah. An occasional on your amplifier during a heavy scene, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's A-OK. -okay. What you don't want to see is a continuous clip light. Like the light is just lit up and that's stays right. lit. Yeah. That means you're getting a square wave or you're running out of power. So you got to back that down and readjust your grain structure. If you back, if you back down the gain knob, then mm -hmm. you can increase your, it depends on which side's clipping. L l scenario A, let's say the output is clipping on the amplifier. What you're going to do is back down, back down the input attenuator knob and raise the output on the channel trim. See if it still clips. It may, it may not, but that's what you would try to do there. If it's the input clipping, then you would lower. So let's say you have 9 dB or you have 7 dB. I have 15 speakers. All 7 dB is re redirected there. If it's input clipping, then I need to lower my subwoofer trim. Mm -hmm. So my subwoofer trim goes from negative 9 to maybe negative 11, for instance. And I might raise my input attenuator knob. Now, the next thing is traditionally... On any of these amps that have the input attenuator knobs, each click, there's an indent on these. You can feel it. You can see it labeled there. Each clip is traditionally 2 dB. So if I raise the channel trim by, you know, a dB and I raise this by 2 dB, I'm getting, I'm, or by one click, I'm getting 3 dB. So what it amounts to is this is the range of, of gain structure that you can do. If you have a fixed amp, like a traditional high audiophile amp, they might have a 29X uh, gain structure. They might have a 32X gain structure. Um, I could tell the gain structure on this one by counting all the indents and multiplying by two. Clicks. Yeah. And that would tell me how many, what's my gain structure on this. Mm -hmm. um, let me look at my notes and see if I missed anything else. And maybe we can look at some questions and answer questions directly. So here's a question from Eric. He mentions kind of a question. He says, you have to have a processor to do what he's describing. I've not seen a receiver capable of what he's describing. Can you answer all, that? All receivers are capable. The of receivers can do it. Yeah. So you're using RCAs and stacks X instead of XLR out. As long as you have, let me step back. I shouldn't say all receivers. Any receiver with preouts is capable of doing it. So if you have RCA preouts or XLR preouts, you're capable of doing this. And that's the intent of it. Is Eric, is for those types of things. Eric, what were you? What are you thinking that the uh, an AVR can't do that a processor can do like maybe kind of describe what you're thinking there he mentions you lower the uh sub gain and raise the voltage on a processor so i think what he what jonathan's talking about is just trim levels every avr every processor they have trim levels so you go into your levels in your settings and you can increase the level of your front left your center channel your right so i don't I don't think there's Ray, any other. He's asking speed. raising or lowering the voltage going into the subs. Well, what he's what he's saying there, as far as you lowering the sub gain and raising the voltage in the processor, that accomplishes the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you're lowering the gain input knob and raising the signal voltage. Mm -hmm. You could do that in pair in parallel and have the exact same output. Um, something I want to and and maybe we need a little bit more information, Eric, on what your question is or where you're thinking. But but I want to kind of explain that I can have. And, and I, I could do this real easily. Let's do this. Yeah, let me put you back up here. So let's say I'm at, let's say I'm at about this far. Maybe it's six clicks up. If I put my trim on my receiver at negative 12 for the subwoofer, and this is, let's say this is running subwoofers. 
I put it at negative 12 and I have a six here. If I increase this, or if I decrease this, as it were, by three clicks, that's going to be 6 dB. So if I increase my voltage from negative 12 to plus six on that channel trim, I'm going to be at the exact same volume mm -hmm. because I've lowered it 6 dB here and I've raised it 6 dB there. So I just want to say, I just want to point out that that's, that's what I'm talking about when I say you can get max power out of this at anything. It's just matching the two, the matching mm -hmm. the processor or AVR. It's six to here, half dozen another. It's yeah. now there's there different is... ways of solving the same problem, or you're trying to solve something else that, and they can have adverse effects into and spread out into the whole equation. Just depends on what okay. you do. I, so he I gets, oh, I, go ahead. I, I do want to say this. I, okay. I can't tell you how many times I've read over the years that I, I had, I couldn't get my signal low enough because I wanted to make sure I could take full advantage and power of the amp. So I had my gain attenuator knobs all the way up and I couldn't get my signal low enough. I've said it multiple ways there. That's a misnomer. You are not losing full power if you're not here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, there's just a lot of kind of confusion on the whole thing. Yeah. If you cannot, if you're on a fixed amplifier, this is something else I wanted to mention, an audiophile amp for your main speakers, and it's, say, a 32X type stage amplifier. I've had this happen when I had JTR speakers at one point. I had a Emotiva amp, and I can't remember if that was a 29 or a 32X stage amplifier, yep. but it was fixed. There was no input attenuation. Correct. And my receiver was at negative 12 on every channel because I had JTR speakers, and they're like 101 dB sensitive. Yeah. I could not, the receiver could not lower itself low enough to get the signal down. Exactly. These are input, atten uh, input attenuation little deals. I don't know. Let me get it close to the camera so you can see. There you go. Yep. So this one drops it by 15 dB. Mm -hmm. And this one drops it by 10 dB and they come okay. in lots of different variant sizes and they come in, this is an XLR style. So right. it goes in your signal path. You got your two XLR cables. It clicks into here and then it clicks into here and you connect your, your components that way, right? It's in the signal path. Mm -hmm. They have these same things in uh, RCA. So if you need to attenuate your signal, if you have too much signal and you are at negative 12, you don't want that because that means you can't even calibrate reference level. You can't get that 75 dB at your seat yeah. because it's too loud. You can, it does not enough range in your processor or your, or your receiver to lower it. So use these. Mm -hmm. If you have the other problem and you're trying to have to go into the positive, like even plus two, plus three, plus four, it's not really good. Right. Absolutely. What you should do then is buy a, a voltage uh, booster. And there's a product that seems to be real popular in the forums for a lot of years called the Art Clean Box Pro. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look in. And you can use that per channel to boost your signal so you don't have to go into the positive on your source, on your speaker level trims or your subwoofer level trims, which will allow you to not have input clipping. Yeah. So just to kind of to kind of confirm what you're talking about, my Clips of Scalas were technically they're rated 104 dB with one watt. Mm -hmm. And so every time I ran Odyssey, my front three LCR were at negative 12. And in my brain, I'm going, what if it needed to be negative 13 or negative Absolutely. 14 or negative 15 to get it to balance, you know? And so, and then I would have to go back and I couldn't raise them anymore because then it puts my other speakers up too high. And right. people in the forums are like, you need attenuators to put in your, like in line in between to kind of back that, I guess, gain structure down a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's what Eric was saying in some of the processors, you physically can adjust that, but you couldn't do that. But he was saying, okay, yeah, that is what he's talking about by being able to do that. Then that would work with an AVR. Yeah. Be able to add those attenuators. And, and Michael, you just did a good job of explaining that. If you ever run auto EQ and you see negative 12 on your receiver <laughs> or even positive 12, both are yeah. not good. Nope. Yeah. You, positive, you've positive 12 will be horrible. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want that. You're yeah, gonna... You've exceeded the, the ability of your receiver or pre-pro to calibrate it to the proper level. So that channel is not accurate. Unless yeah. you just happen to land on 12, which would be a fluke. That would be uncommon. Yeah. Well, Eric says now he definitely wants to have a conversation with you, man. You explained that extremely well. Mad respect. Amazing explanation. That's what I'm saying, man. These guys are a wealth of knowledge. I'm just here for good looks. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, man, that's that's super, super helpful because I've never heard that. I was told a lot. Now, I've only used one pro audio amplifier like what you were showing. I think it was a 
QSC because I had some speakers and I had just a, a small AVR. Now, this is way, way back when we first moved here. So that would have been 17 years ago. Um, I had a small, it's probably like an Onkyo amplifier AVR. And I had the RF 83s. I'm like, man, these things can handle more than this receiver can push out. Mm -hmm. And I was a youth pastor and we had, you know, QSC amplifiers in my youth room. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I've got to Wednesday. I can borrow this thing. So I unhooked, you know, one and took it home. And, and at first I, I, I couldn't get hardly any sound out of it. I'm like, what is going on? And I reached out in the forums. They're like, Oh, with those, here's what I was told with QSC amplifiers. You need to turn that thing wide open. They said, it's not a volume thing. Mm -hmm. It's, and they equated it to, it's almost like, uh, like a water spigot. You need to go ahead and open up that spigot to allow as much to come through that conduit as possible. So they were giving me inaccurate. I mean, that wasn't anything. Yeah, that, that was totally playing. wrong information. Yeah. And so I um, turned it wide open and then it was like, you know, I got sound, but it wasn't yeah. balanced or anything. Yeah. Well, I, I think that this stems into a lot of different areas. Um, people have these kind of, kind of confusing things. And it, I think it also feeds into this whole idea that like pro audio amps or audiophile amps or any of the different amplifiers can really liven up your system. It's because people aren't doing that SPL test, right? Mm. So I'm saying this you set really every common. channel to 75 dB here. Somebody swaps out, they're at a receiver, they swap to a fixed 32 amp stage uh, mm. Emotiva their receiver was not a 32 X stage. So now at the same volume trims, they didn't go through the change of trims. They don't understand this. They don't. And that's okay. Just, yeah. We're learning here. Yeah. Their channel trims are whatever they were. Maybe they're all set to negative six, negative four, that type of thing. Okay. You just went from a, say a 25 X stage to a 32 X stage. Your highs, your main speakers just went seven DB louder by swapping okay. amp, but they're okay. clear. They, so now they're like, wow, listen, everything came to life, right? Now it sounds totally different. My system's never sounded like this. You're listening to it 7 dB louder than you did before. Ah. Get your SPL meter and put back that, your trims, back, down. Your trims yep. back down to where they're 75 dB at your seats. And you're going to be like, why did I just spend another four Good luck here in the <laughs> Well, and then this <laughs> is kind of something that you, you brought up, Jonathan, and I think this is part of the confusion, mm -hmm. is I don't have the gains on the power amps no more straight up because if the gains are too high, you start hearing background noise and you can get full power only a third of the way up. Yep. But you get the same thing if you're a third of the way up and increase your input voltage from the preamp. Sure. So it doesn't matter how you're doing this. You can raise the attenuator all the way up and have a really low voltage. And yep. now you're going to hear the background noise. You can have it all the way down and raise the voltage and the same thing's going to happen. So mm. it's it just depends on what you're trying to do. This is why I said six one way half a dozen another you're accomplishing the same thing in two different ways right so i had a question the other day this speaks to that exact thing the guy didn't understand the gain voltage thing as well so he was saying hey i want full power i got my gain knobs maxed out but i got this hiss mm -hmm. and i said well do you, does your hiss go away if you back off the knobs to like two-thirds your input attenuator knobs and he's like yeah i can't hear the hiss at all and i said well then let's raise your incoming signal and let's lower it at two thirds and your problem is solved because you're missing nothing at that point and you're not having the hiss. Your ground floor noise has just dropped. And as long as we're not going into the kind of scary realm of like the subwoofer trims or, or above zero for the speaker trims, we're good. And, you're, right. and your problem is solved. I like it, man. So let me just ask you guys, if you found value in that, Throw a little thumb up, man. There's a little thumb button down there somewhere. Let us know, man. I see two thumbs up on this whole live stream. We've been going for an hour and a half. <laughs> Jonathan's dropping wisdom and Ryan. So let them know you appreciate them, man. Uh, da, 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 da. What else we got here? Uh, so I, I do have a question on that because I even get confused with the whole 75, 85. Now, my understanding is if I'm running internal test homes and they say, really, you shouldn't do that. No, I don't agree with that. You can. That you works. Okay. I do. Okay. I do think that's fine. But go ahead. You shouldn't. But if I'm using, say, a Marantz, I run the internal test homes and I'm shooting for 75 because the receiver 
is adding that. I mean, it's basically measuring to 85, but it's only letting my ears hear 75. Is that correct? It's, it's running the test tone to be set at 75. And then it's, it's internally calculating that to be 85 for actual That's program right. content. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so it's programming it for 85, but my ears are hearing 75. Your SPO meter is hearing 75. Yes. Yeah. So that it's not too loud in my room. I don't damage my speakers. Right. So my question is if I'm using an external. Yes. If you go to one of these discs and you play the sine wave, it should be 85. And I, and I validated this tonight okay, just to make okay. sure. That's what I, I guess I heard earlier. Either way, you're doing 75 or 75. Okay. No. Once you're okay. back at program content, like a disc okay. or a streaming media, that same sign okay. sweep, if you can find it, will be 85. Because okay, it doesn't have that internal processing of the receiver. That's all it's one. Okay. I just mm -hmm. want to clarify that because it sounded like earlier you were saying just 75. Okay. So if no. you're using the internal uh, test tones from your right. AVR or processor, that's going to be 75. But if you're using a disc, to do that, you're wanting to your SPL yeah. meter. And to I agree eight. with what Tony's saying. I don't know. I don't have any testing to back this up, but mm -hmm. I personally try and get around as much of the internal processing as possible. So if you want a de facto, this is what you're getting. I would always mm -hmm. verify with an external measurement. Mm -hmm. So my most experiences with Dan and Moran's products, and I can tell you that they're pretty much spot on because I went mm -hmm. through these discs today to test and they're, and they're within a DB, all of them. So from my receiver test tones, it's, it's, it's accurate. Now, the other interesting thing is these receiver test tones are all built a little differently. Some of yeah. them are centered at a thousand. Some of them are centered at 800. Um, the, so if you, so let me, let me rephrase it this way. Be, what the Spears and Munsell one is 500 to 2000. Um, so, so what that amounts to is, you know how we've talked about frequency response being in your room. Ideally, it would be ruler flat, but it's not because you have modes and knolls in your room based on your placement and your seats and your room boundaries and all that kind of stuff. So if, let's say if, you're, if your disc, like this wow disc, is centered at 800 hertz. If my wow disc is centered at 800 hertz and I happen to have an 800 hertz knoll or boost in my room on that speaker, guess what happens to my calibration? it's not going to be accurate, right? Because I'm now tuning for something that's a, that's a artifact of the room. The ones that have a wider range, like that Spears and Munsell, that's 500 to 2000 is probably a little more accurate, right? Because it's kind of taking a, a broader subset of the frequency response spectrum to make sure that you're, to make sure that you're actually at that level. So depending on your receiver, your receiver has a pure sine wave at a particular Hertz, like say it's a thousand Hertz, sine wave that probably is not a great idea it, it's better to have like a limited band pink pink noise or uh you know like a, a narrow band say 500 to 2000 from that spheres and muscle is a good idea mm -hmm. so randy says that's it jonathan gets to pick the topics for the breakout sessions at next end wave <laughs> does line level boosters reduce sound quality this is a good this is a good question and I had the same question. So let's talk about it. I have that OmniMic frequency response tool, um, real-time analysis, and I tested these things when I bought them because I was worried about that very thing. Like, wait, am I am I rolling off the high frequencies or am I affecting the bass in any way? The answer is absolutely not. And I was glad to see that because I was worried about it myself. It was like when I put this and and these things aren't perfectly accurate let me but put you're that out talking there about reduction he's talking about boosting N uh, no i think he's saying do, do they I, I read it as do they reduce says, quality? the line level boosters reduce the sound quality okay so, so yeah you're talking you're right Ryan. in his in his situation especially with headphones the problem that people get into is they'll get some not as sensitive headphones as what the amp on their motherboard or whatever they're using can drive more than likely, the simple solution for what you're using, especially if you've got $3,000 headphones, is the headphones aren't sensitive and you need a bigger amp and they need more power. Mm -hmm. And that's going to open them up. I wouldn't use, in your situation, a line level booster. You need more power to go to them from an amplifier. I think if yeah. you use a line level booster for the amount of power that you're going to have to send, um, you're going to induce hissing, hissing in your... your uh, Noise floor is going to be really bad. So I would get a quality amp. Look at Monoprice. They've got great headphone amps. Um, that's where I would start. In regards to these things, and I'm sorry I misunderstood your question, but these do not change quality. My frequency response graph 
if this says 15 dB, it might be 14, it might be 16, it may not be exactly 15, but again, that doesn't matter because you're matching it with your SPL meter and maybe it's a half dB or more on the, on the channel trim. They were, they were precisely, I mean, like by the, by the number, exactly the same frequency response, just down 15 I mean, dB. Effectively, down, all you're dB. doing is applying a known resistance to the electrical signal, mm -hmm. which should be a known factor and shouldn't affect it at all as long as it's consistent. So this gentleman asked a question. He'd like to understand the zero attack limiter on the non-DSP Behringer NX units. I would too, man. <laughs> I've asked questions on that before, and I've tried to get to the bottom of it in forum posts and stuff, and I never could get a clear answer with it. And what's more, I've played with it, and I can't Aren't I can't really tell a whole lot of difference when I'm playing with it. Attack, mm. usually, when it comes to microphones and stuff, is based on when it actually plays a sound. Is that how it's being done on the... This is just something I thought of. I have no idea how it's being used in an amplifier. Is that kind of what it's associating itself with, or does anybody actually know? My understanding from reading it is that basically like how fast and hard it's going to ramp up at the very first initial part of that note. Yeah. But, in, but in practice, when I'm trying to like listen to it and, and play with it and like real content, I, I can't hear the difference. I, I mean, it didn't go to extreme mm -hmm. settings, but just playing it a little bit, like it, it it's, it's so subtle to me. <laughs> Obviously you're not experienced enough. So your opinion is possible. Going back through and look at some questions here. Yeah. Oh, these are great questions. I don't think there were really too many. I think we got them as they came in. Yeah, a couple, couple clarific clarification ones that we addressed. All right, very good. Good topic, man. I love it. I'm probably going to take this section, and I'm going to go ahead and export that because I think that's that would be something super helpful on the channel. Very, very valuable. So I'll go ahead and get that exported and post it as a separate video for you guys. All right. For the questions. Bam. There's a few. Sebastian, did you see the new Perlison speakers from Shane's podcast? I saw briefly. Um, Carbon fiber. They, mm. they have a big horn or something. And they were asking, like, did Perlison and Arendelle have a baby or something? And, um, because they've got like the what? Arendelle kind of shape. You, have, you haven't seen it? No. Post All right, picture. All right. Well, I don't think, I don't know if there's a picture. Uh, let me go to Shane's channel. Shane Lee. And it was a podcast that he did. Come on, search. All right. There we go. All right. New per listens. Look out. All right. So I will. All right. So let's put this on here. Again, I was at Scott Newby's, didn't get a chance to look at it, but there it is. <laughs> that looks very strange to me. But what I have not watched that. The, I, again, I have not watched the video. You may have to go watch it. Uh, let's see. It says clip was taken from the YouTube Patreon member stream. So if anybody's seen this video, let us know what that is. Is that something from Perlison? Was that? Super glue job or <laughs> what? I don't. I don't like know. Some sort of like Chat yeah. GPT AI. Speaking I don't know. What, I don't know what the context was, but hmm. Shane was on there with Jordan Haterade Cowboy and Don Dunn. It just so, yeah. looks like. I don't want Shane flagging my channel because I'm <laughs> playing his content. I don't understand. But, uh, I, yeah, I don't know where he's getting these images from. So I'll have to go back and watch it myself. Let us know in the chat if you saw that. I'm going to see if Eric responds to me. Hold on. Let me take a picture of this. Okay. Well, here's one here. All right. So apparently these are real pictures. They're not, um, you know, Photoshopped or anything. Oh, that's Tecton. Wow. <laughs> that's different. That's for sure. You would think that the horn would interfere with the mid-range, though. Because it's covering it. So I don't know. That's something. All right. I asked him. We'll see what he says. Yeah. If he gets back to me. So, again, guys, I haven't seen the video. I just saw some, um, like, a clip of it. I saw the thumbnail. I'm like, what is that? So he says, cheaper model, no beam form forming. It won't be available in the U.S. for a year. 
the wave got us blocking part of the driver. I thought the same thing, Rick. Who but said this? Where is this? I'm just looking at the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at chat. This isn't Eric. So um, is that a coaxial driver? I don't know. Or is that just a normal? Okay, so he said Shane got Shane got permission to show their cheaper line coming out in China. Oh. Uh, and the thinking is to compete with Arendelle. So again, they definitely have a similar look. Tony says looks similar to Genelec. Uh Jonathan says cheaper model with no beam forming. What well, what Arendelle does that look similar to? It's certainly not the 1723. I think that... they're just talking about like the just the style of the, the, the horn, horn in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Or the waveguide yeah. or whatever they're calling that. Yeah, because it's circular. It's not like square, rectangular. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, yeah. So I think pretty much everybody. So I appreciate that chat for letting us know. Because like I said, I haven't had a chance to, to see the video to know what the, the context was there. All right. So as far as... Did we see them? No, apparently not. None of us did. Wonder if we'll be at Cedia. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, if they're if they're shown in China, would they? Like if that's their market? I don't know. I've no would idea. they bring it to the US to, to debut or would do they just know. do it at the show over there? No clue. Okay. Uh Billy says I thought they said it was designed by the same guy that did Arendal. But I can't remember exactly. I would have thought that they would have designed them. I don't know yeah. why they would contract that out or I don't something. Know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not Interesting. sure. Interesting. Maybe Eric will get back with you on that. Marvin Be says, cool. uh, Jonathan, watch your sharpness video in Z7 versus Epson LS12000. Were the projectors calibrated? If not, would calibration provide the sharpness boost that you illustrated? Uh, stand by and let me look at the order that I released those in. I don't remember if I released that one as the third one or the which one order. If it was the third one, they were calibrated. I'll check for you. So we're, what he's referencing, Marvin, is Jonathan has his own YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to him, definitely look up Jonathan Von England on YouTube. So that was my most recent video, and they were calibrated for that one. So your answer is is that they were calibrated. And the sharpness, I've kind of talked about this on another podcast, but just to make a quick overview, the sharpness on the Epson LS12000 isn't very great, in my opinion, out of the five presets that come out of the box. There's image enhancement one through five. Mm -hmm. You can customize the sharpness enhancement. I choose three, and then there's multiple customization, customization options you can do on it. And you can make it very nice by doing some customization. It's traditional that Epson seems to not really make their product look as best it can out of the box, where JVC does a better job with that. While I can make Epson sharpness look better than the default settings by multiple people's eyes, by the JVC standard on the opposite side, I really can't make it look better. Like their sharpness settings, in my opinion, that they have out of the box are kind of like where it's at. So... When we were, I had a, I had a group over here with a bunch of guys. There's about nine of us and we were taking the two remotes and playing with them and we never got the JVC quite to be as sharp as the Epson. Now there's a difference in the sharpness. The Epson LS 12,000 sharpness is kind of like a digital sharpening where the JVC has more like a film look. And there's a subjective preference there that some people, like I know one of the guys on the forum who knows a lot about projectors, his name is Nick. He goes by Sir Master on the forums. He absolutely prefers the film look of the JVC. There's a difference there. Even with the customized sharpness settings on the Elpson, he's going to prefer that film look because it doesn't have a, a more digital TV. image. But if you're just looking at real content, like side by side, the Epson in that customized setting has a sharper picture. If you're looking at small tiny text because the JVC is a native 4k panel like say you open up Excel and you put an eight point font on there and you put them side by side mm -hmm. the JVC resolves that eight point font just a little bit better a, a little bit better because it's a native 4k panel but with real world content and media content in my opinion the Epson is a little sharper with those sharpness settings engaged so what you see in that video is fair I think it's a fair attribute and it's Cool. compressed with with youtube a little bit and that and whatnot but you kind of get the idea right so going back to the previous topic eric got back to me okay 
and he said these will not be released outside of Asia. Okay. They're Asia market only. It's a traditional dome tweeter. Mm. So it's not a compression so it driver. It doesn't have the beam forming that they were talking it's about. It's not beam formed. Okay. And it was designed by them. Okay. Just to put yeah. all that info out there. Cool. And Eric said yeah, and there, there were some other people giving some some comments on that. Um, because Dan Romer designed a lot of, mm -hmm. I guess, some of the um, Arundel speakers. Because originally, remember, Perlison, the actual brand, hasn't been out but a few years. Mm -hmm. But Dan's been designing speakers and subwoofers for a long time for a lot of brands, almost like under the radar. You know, they would contract it with him to design their speakers or subwoofers, Monolith. He designed a lot of their subwoofers, the THX series. Um, I don't even know what other brands that he's he's worked on. But so that makes sense now that it was the same person. Mm -hmm. And they did contract, but it was him, you know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see. Vet says, any home theater experience with Legacy Signature, Perlison R-Series, RBH Sound, or Paradigm Founder. I prefer in-room speakers to in-wall, and my room is 29 foot by 18 foot with 9 foot ceilings. It's a big room. Yeah. I haven't heard any legacy home theaters. I've heard them all in two channel. I've heard the Perlison R series at M Wave. Mm -hmm. They had that. Was wait. Was they it had the R S and R? S was in the theater. R was in the two channel. Okay, that's right. So I haven't heard an R series home theater. RBH sound. I have heard. Um, Paradigm founder. I have not. I'm not a fan of legacy. I think it's just too expensive. I don't know anybody that's running a home theater with legacy. Uh, we heard one sure. years ago, but not the newest models with a legacy home theater. And you're right. That's an expensive home theater. It Those, is. I think the main speakers were like 25 grand for a pair. And well, then... RBH is going to be expensive too. Yeah. Uh, oh, and paradigm. I mean, all of these, honestly, they're yeah. really inexpensive. I really Those like probably be the least expensive, especially I mean, we... ours. We were just talking about Perlison. I really like Perlison. I mean, they're mm. designed objectively from the ground up. Dan knows what he's Imagine. doing. Eric knows what he's doing yeah. from a design perspective. They're fantastic speakers. I mean, uh, that's the direction that I would go, especially with their new in walls. They're mm -hmm. in ceiling coming. Um, I know you said you like in room, which I would agree right. on the base layer. And if you do it on the ceiling too. I think mm -hmm. that's what Jonathan and I both do, and you, you do, Michael. I mean, the Correct. on ceiling slants or boxes that are in your ceiling, but it's or are they on your ceiling? Mine are on my. Ceiling. You're on your ceiling. They're actually mounting. So external. none of us use in walls. They're all on yeah. walls Correct. or in room. Mm -hmm. um, I would do Perlissum, personally. Yeah, I think RBH and Paradigm make good speakers. But I think they're just too expensive. I would do for listen. And then if you wanted to, I mean, if you're looking at even a higher one, they've got the you know for listen S series, give you a little bit more output, but they still have the same technology. Mm -hmm. When I was talking with Eric and um, when I interviewed them at CDA last year, so That's and what Ryan's a dealer, yeah, and Ryan's a dealer, so yeah, if you need can always something. reach out to him getting ready to start a new thing where every thousand dollars you spend with me you get i think what am i doing <laughs> 10, he had a sale and he 10, forgot 10 what it up back, I, I 10 10 10 percent back in points so then you yeah, can use it, that it was, on credit it was called a youth man deal is what you said oh i didn't say that <laughs> no Sorry, it's been I, a long day yeah let me see you had texted me yeah on Sunday, I'm going to advertise that for every thousand dollars someone spends with me, they get oh, you said X amount of credit 10%. for their next transaction. Yeah, so he didn't decide. Okay, he just decided it on the fly. No, so cool. I just couldn't remember. Yeah. So I get points. Some. Yeah, I get the points. No, they get the points. <laughs> Ryan gets the shopping boy for a, for a future purchase. It doesn't go on to that one. It has to be yeah. on the future. Sure, that's the way all businesses run. Man. Yeah, cool. yeah. Starbucks does that. 
Yeah. I go there, I get my coffee, and they give me points, but I can't use the points then. So guess what? I come back next time and I use my points. I'm happy. They're happy. So that's the way it works. Points expire? Ooh, no. There you go. <laughs> no. That's funny. All right. JD, the expert. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, do y'all think I can run a Sony STR AN 1007.2 channel receiver with my clips? JD, you asked me that, I think, in a, either an email or on a comment. Absolutely. Um, no, nah, man, it'll blow up. Yeah, the, the <laughs> clips are, are going to be pretty efficient. And the fact that you're running, you know, you're not trying to do 12 speakers. Seven speakers will be just fine. Um, that's not, I've, all right, so... All right, let me look at that that AVR. Is that one of the newer ones or one of the older ones? Typically, the older ones didn't have very good power supplies. The newer ones supposedly have pretty beefy power supplies. AN1000. So my guess is that's probably going to be one of their budget-friendly ones. Uh, let's see. AN-1000. Sony. Let's see what you got here, buddy. All right, so that is okay. So it's a current model, I think. It's 8K, 900 bucks. So I mean, it's not like a $400 AVR. And we're looking at. Let me share my screen real quick here for you. Friends don't let friends buy Sony AVRs. That's my yeah. Opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't been a fan, honestly. But again, the newer ones. I don't have any experience with the newer ones. I haven't either. And so I'm basing mine off my the old ones, which I was never a fan of. Uh, I'm trying to look at what are we running power wise, and does it have pre outs? I always recommend finding an amplifier, or, um, um, an AVR with pre outs, just in case you need extra power. I mean, they say they've got these large pa power capacitors, large capacity transformers. So I think they're making some strides towards a much better. But Michael, here's all you have to do. You showed the back of that Sony, did you? I was looking on the side. Did you show the back of it? I have not. So find the find the back of the panel for the Sony if you can. Yeah, it looks yeah. it looks like a the website's kind of janky here. Um there's those. Just Google here. search. I'll, it. I'll put a link in private chat. Oh, he got you. it. I got it. Uh, so no, that, that looks like a three hundred dollar Onkyo back, and that's a thousand dollar receiver. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. Right, now, yeah, yeah. now the Denon thirty eight hundred goes on sale for a thousand bucks, like every week. It seems like here, Ryan, we see that on those, like uh, some of the some of the AB. What is this? What's the name of the shop that keeps running? Adorama keeps running that thousand dollar thirty eight hundred. Pull up the Denon thirty eight hundred receiver back and and compare. So, like you said, there's no pre outs here. This looks like kind of janky stuff. Now yep. look at a Denon 3800 rear end. Oh man! There you Holy go. Holy crap! Look now at that. Let's, now let's talk this about big this difference, stuff. right? Yeah, it's a big difference. We've got all pre outs for every channel right here. You got two subwoofer outputs. No, three you subwoofer. Should have, you should have four subwoofer outputs on that. Oh, yeah. it's hard to see. Yep. So there's one. There were different colors for some reason. Like these are black, and then this is white. Yeah, That's and bottom yeah. line, that 3800 is a lot better receiver than that Sony, and it's about the same price, unless you found a really good deal on the Sony. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have um, Odyssey with this, Sony. What does Sony use? Is it their own proprietary? <sighs> what do they use? Sony Auto EQ. They use Again, their I own proprietary okay, Sony. So it's proprietary, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tony said, Ryan, I need a $10,000 amp. Then my next purchase will be the Christie Eclipse. Did I say something weird? I don't know. I thought it was 10% back in points. <laughs> he said, so if you spend I don't 10, get it. 100% off the next purchase. <laughs> I think he's thinking youth man deal or something. I, I guess. That's quite the youth man deal. Yeah, usually youth man deals are like, Can I come oh. live with you, Tony? <laughs> Yeah, JD, I, like I said, I mean, I'm, I don't, I try not to poo poo on Sony. Um, I just, in the past, I haven't been impressed with them, but their new ones are supposedly better, but I personally don't have any experience with it. Um, Denon's definitely have always been solid. And uh, 
I'm with Jonathan, man. I, I'd probably take if, it, especially if they're similar in price or at least a couple hundred bucks. I mean, a couple hundred bucks for the additional HDMI inputs, the four subwoofer independent outputs, um, pre outs. I think that's well worth it. So, even if just you got to save be clear, up, just a little, what did we say that Sony was priced at? 900, 900 bucks. Yeah. So, it's not much difference. And Jonathan said you can get that den on. On sale, if you keep an eye out on it, like Adorama, for a thousand bucks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not been hard. It's gone on sale three times, I think, in the last month for a thousand bucks. If you go to AVS Forum Hot Deal section, you'll find it. And that's a that's that's kind of the best deal right now. In fact, they have a twenty eight hundred. If you don't need the thirty eight hundred features, and the twenty eight hundred's been on sale for six hundred, which is also a nice receiver. And that's a seventeen hundred dollar AVR right now on their website and they drop it down 700 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's a killer deal. I don't know how that deal is even working. It's probably, I don't know. Adorama is legit. I bought multiple things oh, from yeah. them over oh, the I'm year. not saying they're not legit. I don't know how that's even happening. Money. It's like, is that a lost leader kind I of thing? I don't know. It has to be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, $700 off. They don't have that much markup in them. Yeah. Good advice there. Uh, Terry Steven, I like your last name, Terry. Uh, mm. Do you guys use soundproofing? Green glue, staggered stud walls, multiple layers of drywall, getting ready to sheetrock the theater and don't want to waste money if they do not work. Great question, man. If done correctly. It, it so what, does, what does that mean? Well, I mean, just, would you... use, just using and doing stuff, I think, can... If it's not done correctly, isn't going to do anything. Yeah. I think the best implementation of this that I've ever seen was a guy named Neb Runner on the forum. And we visited his theater on a Nebraska home theater tour years back. And I had my Omni mic with me and I measured in his room right above the theater. Like in his, and he had a room within a room, double drywall, hanging, dry, hanging clips, all that stuff, green glue, everything, the whole nine yards. When he was playing reference in his home theater, like a true legit reference, he had all do-it-yourself speakers, all good stuff. He, above his room, if I remember correctly, and I could go find the forum post again, it measured 75 dB or so. So mm -hmm. you're dropping from 115 dB to 75 dB in the room above. That's not quiet, but it's not also crazy because of like an HVAC system in a room will often make it 60 dB. So you're 15 dB louder than an HVAC system being on. And that's like, so you could, you could hear that there was sound in the house, but it was not obnoxious. If you go above most, if you go above most home theater rooms in the room above, and you're playing a reference level movie, it's it's going to be obnoxious. Mm -hmm. So it 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 works. It's quite a bit of expense, and you have to figure out whether that expense is worth it or whether you'd rather spend more money on the equipment. That's kind of where I land. I'd agree. I mean, you a room like that can cost you fifty grand. And yeah. and maybe for and maybe for fifty grand you'd rather have a killer system and just play it when your wife's not home, <laughs> you know. <laughs> give you can give her a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks and send her off to the mall, man, and you'd be better off, right? Yeah, you and when I'm saying fifty grand, I'm probably talking about do-it-yourself type expense, yeah. not not hiring a custom installer. It's, it's really grand, expensive, like and, and I think even I, at that point, there's potentially other alternatives too that'll get you room within a room, and there's. Yeah, you're starting to get into like Officino Acoustica and Cinematech and a bunch of other finishing companies when you start to get into that those price points with them coming in and doing all of your stretch fabrics and yeah. custom acoustic implementations and things like that. It just depends on what level you're trying to do. Yeah. And the other thing is if you just do kind of like... A if you step back from that and you say, I'm going to do kind of a more modest thing. I'm going to put pink fluffy in the rafters. I'm going to do a single layer of drywall or whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to just do like kind of a, a, a inexpensive version. It mm -hmm. might be, maybe it's 85 DB in the room upstairs instead of 75 DB. Mm -hmm. 85 DB isn't going to like drive your wife out into the street in madness. It's it, you know, it's still, it, what's your priority? How much money do you have to spend? What, you know, what's your, What's your take on what the value of that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely can add up quick when you're trying to really just isolate the sound and keep the sound in the room. Um, but again, we had Scott Newby on the channel. He had, now he has a basement. I don't know what your situation is, Terry, but yes, his front door was flexing 
<laughs> but we were standing out in his front yard. I mean, I could hear it, but it wasn't like, I know the neighbors aren't going, Oh my gosh, that Scott dude again, he's going nuts. In it. And he's doing 150 DB. Most people aren't doing that. Most people aren't doing 14, 18 inch subwoofers in their theater room. And, you know, I have people ask me all the time, like, man, your neighbors probably hate you, right? No, they don't I have a good relationship with my neighbors. And I'm very courteous to them. I don't crank it up at two in the morning or midnight. Um, and I've told all of them, I said, look, if I ever disturb you, if you're, if it's bothersome, call me, text me, I will more than happy turn down my system. And I've been here 17 years and I've never gotten that phone call or text ever. Um, and our homes are probably 10 foot apart. Well, maybe not 10, let's say 20. So it's not a big, I mean, it's not like I got an acre lot. While that's all true, I think the other part of this, though, is that acoustic treatments, or not acoustic treatments, but room design like this can also help acoustics in the room and not just out of Absolutely. the room. Absolutely. I totally get it, 100%. But what we're saying is that it definitely can, yeah, because Grant talks a lot about that. You know, his goal was to keep the sound in the room for several things, but he also wanted to keep sound from coming into the room, like his kids walking upstairs. But I'm not even just talking about things coming into the room. I'm talking about resonances and other things from affecting the actual acoustics. Mm -hmm. Those can also be affected. So there's a lot of pros to this. You mm -hmm, just sure. have to define what mm -hmm. and how much is it worth? Mm -hmm. How much money yep. are you willing to throw at these problems? Because sure. it all becomes a diminishing return. Yeah. Yep, like as it. Randy brings up one thing that this helps is bass frequencies and the decay times for those bass frequencies lingering in the room. So mm -hmm. if you don't have proper ways to be able to get rid of low frequencies, they're just going to linger and the decay times are going to be abnormally long leading to lackluster, not lackluster, but lowered experiences in the room, I guess is mm -hmm. what I'll say. Jay Moore says, hi, all. I would like to hear any recommendation for a power conditioner. Thanks. So the only one I have is it's an older Panamax. Um, and honestly, it's a fancy surge protector for me. Um, definitely doesn't change the sound. So what are you wanting the power conditioner to do? I guess it would be my first question. Um, I mean, Panamax, what are some of the other brands that you've had experience with? Big Dog. I've used Furman. What'd you say? Big dog oh, I'm made by fine. Ethereal and Furman. Okay. Okay. Furman. Do mm -hmm. you all recommend them? I do, but I not yeah. for the typical reasons, probably. I like Go ahead, Ryan. I don't want to cut you off. No, I think they're helpful. They they can fix problems. They're not going to magically make things if you already have a nice quiet noise floor and you don't have any hum and you've not encountered any problems, they're not going to magically make your room and your experience better and things sound better. <laughs> oh my God. They can fix issues. I think is what Jonathan's going to bring up. He has some experiences yeah. where they've helped him quite a bit. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that they do much for the sound. You kind of hear that it makes the highs higher, or the bass better. I'm not sure I've ever heard that or that's probably more, more just like snake oil stuff. Yep. But there was a very real difference in my old Epson 8350 projector when I had a, a power conditioner in the line and not. And I've tried several different power connectors and even APAC like UPSs mm -hmm. and stuff like smart power UPSs. The 8350 would flicker. It was on a common line shared throughout the house and I would get a flickering on the screen like a almost like a light bulb flicker, you know, because it is a projector bulb. And right. with the power conditioner in place, it was a steady image. So it doesn't, you know, it, this was not, you know, some sort of, it was objectively different, clear to okay. see, clear difference. More so than that, if you have good power, like I don't have that problem in my current house. This was my previous house. Maybe the lines were dirtier. I don't know. I don't have that issue. But another thing that kind of made me get sold on the idea of these power conditioners or these power, like you said, surge protectors effectively. Yeah. We had a lightning strike in our neighborhood when I had a monster power, was it a 5200 MK something or whatever, I think. And it had an LCD display on it. And I it was lightning crazy outside. And I just happened to look over at the precise time that I needed to catch it. I looked over and I was watching that monster power to see if there was any problems with the power. And lightning struck the neighborhood, not, not our house. Right. But it shut off all the lights and everything. Right. It was a quick blip. 
Yeah. I was still looking over there when the power came back on and I, I was hooked up to 110 power, 110 volt power, right? When that came on, that voltage readout showed 280 volt and it clamped down and shut down and beeped and died. Well, I'd rather that monster power thing clamp down and die than all my other thousands of dollars of equipment in my rack that yeah. all came back to life. Nothing was hurt. So that thing, you know, sacrificed itself to make sure my other equipment didn't die and it was worth every penny for yeah. that reason alone. I just unplug it. <laughs> I do. I climb behind there. I unplug everything because we're, we're the lightning capital of the world. So we get lots of lightning storms, especially certain seasons. And when it comes hammering, man, I'm like, all right, all right, Jessica, I'm going in there. So I'll be in, <laughs> climb underneath my, my, um, uh, cabinet just start pulling plugs man but yeah so i agree uh, da, da, da. i'll oh, also okay. just put a little pit spin in there that if you're going to buy one and you really want to have some like legitimate difference with twice besides the surge protector aspect mm -hmm. you probably ought to be getting one that makes a, a genuine sine wave right so there's simulated sine waves ones and there's voltage regulation ones that do a genuine sine wave and you can get them like ups backups that kind of thing they're called smart ups's mm -hmm. if you're going to get something make sure you get the real sine wave one and and you arguably might i don't think our human ears can probably hear it but at least it's legitimately doing something versus just being a surge protector and they'll cost a little bit more but they're they will probably probably help your equipment run a little bit better because you're not getting any spikes or anything. The like the one I have right now, it's a 5400 from uh, Furman Panamax, as it were. Furman and Panamax are the same company, yeah. Yeah. and that has a legitimate sine wave. So it's it's taking what it gets from the wall and it's legitimately recreating the sine wave in, in perfection. If it goes too high or too low, it just shuts off. It's not going to deal with it. I think it has like a 10 dB range or something that it will. 10, 10 volts range or something that it will make the sine wave perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And so theoretically, that should increase the lifespan of your equipment. It's not getting any dirty power. It's getting a clean sine wave no matter what's happening in your power. So that's something to consider too. That, yeah. What are those costs? Like they're, they're kind of expensive. About a thousand bucks. Yeah. I would you, give it, it was an older one and the guy gave it to me for helping him out. Mm -hmm. um, but it was that's the youth man deal they were talking about. <laughs> and don't buy it thinking it's going to make your bass better, your audio better. It's not really noticeably going to do that, but it might make your equipment lift, lift longer. And I'm proof that it will help in a lightning storm or a power electrical storm or something to brown out that type of things. Yeah, Herc, Herc agrees with you. He says, I had a new, neutral line rot through at the road. All my equipment was on power conditioners. If I didn't have that, my equipment would have been ruined. You know, Herc, you're right on the money with that too, because we had something similar go down with one of our lines, and I not my voltage, my my uh, Panamax 5400 was beeping and going crazy, like it. The, mm -hmm. And I looked over there, and the voltage was jumping between 95 volts and 140 volts, and my Panamax alerted me that there was a problem. One of my amplifiers that wasn't on the Panamax did fry. I whether it was related to that or not, I don't know, but none of my equipment behind the Panamax fried. So so same sort of story. Sure. And if for those of you that are anybody else surprised that Brian has one for sale? No. Just saying. <laughs> it's probably up here. <laughs> he probably, yeah, he's never unboxed it. Probably it's brand new, but he wants the better one. So he's already ordered the other one. So if you're interested in one, shoot me an email, Michael at youthmanreviews.com, and I'll get you in touch with Brian. Too funny, dude. You cracked me up, man. Let's this is true. I this is true right here. Ivan mentions why not just do a whole house surge protection? That's legitimate. Do. Yeah, they most really people do, probably do, do if you have a newer house. And surge, mm -hmm. so not only surge protection. If you want to take that a step further, do a whole home UPS. Mm -hmm. I mean, the UPS is kind of taking it. Now you're getting exactly what's coming off the batteries, and then they're just constantly recharging the batteries, so you're getting constant yeah. the entire time. And it's yeah, that's the way to go. But they're expensive. So Brian bought an APC. He's excited. Uh, here's a real quick one. Um, was monolith HTP one at M wave? No, we did not no. have one at M wave this year. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Quite Kai. I have no idea how I like the AVM 70 have not hooked it up yet. <laughs> you get asked that every week. You better Dude, get on it. It's I'm telling you, man, I'm so far behind, but I've got so many things going on. We had M wave, which consumed all of my time for the last two or three months leading up to it, trying to get ready for that. Um, and then we've had audio advice live. 
I had Atlanta Home Theater event there. I just literally got back from Scott Newby's um, Bass Brings Us Together event in the um, uh, Chicago land area. I uh, hear that's the, the term. Because so I think he's about an hour one direction from Chicago. But uh, just got back from that. And I literally pulled in the driveway. Ten minutes later, we went live here on uh, the AV experience. And so, and then two weeks, I'll be headed to Cedia. So yeah. No, so once I get two back, weeks, you're talking under two like, weeks. <laughs> oh, please don't tell me that. I really yeah. thought I had two weeks, man. No. Gosh, see, you got, that's my you life. Got Ten now. days. Mm. Okay. Dang. Yeah. So good thing is I I was real productive on the flight. I actually edited two videos, at least a video and almost a second video. So I'll have another video go live tomorrow, one right after that the next day. So I'm trying to, I'll, I've got to get some of these out. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, we did that one. Perfect. I'm unchecking some of these. All right, Dual Captivator 4000 sealed reported for a two-channel music room. It won't matter that much. You're not going to be approaching the 10 hertz tune with music for music. Mm -hmm. If you need more output, get the ported for that matter. If it's music, I can't imagine that you would need even that much output for a music room, but to each his own. Yeah. I mean, I crank my subs for music. Maybe he wants to go ham. <laughs> Those are yeah. big, big cabinets though. Just be aware. They may not seem big from the pictures, but they're not small. They're awesome. I mean, I have five of them. Scott had seven of them. <laughs> All right. Ray says, Denon on 4700H as with other units to get Oral 3D. Need to I need set up to think that your overhead speakers are really up front and rear speakers. Does it sound just as good? I would not build anything for Oral 3D. Yeah, it's dying. It's a dead format. I don't even know if it's dying. It never took off. It, yeah, how can it be dying if it was dead? I mean, there's very little content for it. It's, I wouldn't. Well, to be it. fair, you can upmix anything to it, right? The All right, so I've heard both. I did enjoy taking two channel and up mixing it to the Oro 3D or Oro up. I did. I actually liked it. Mm. I thought it was really cool. And again, this is one home theater. I don't even remember whose it was, but they had a, a Oro 3D setup, Oro 3D layout, and we listened to two channel, and then they played it in this optimizer up mixed for Oro. I'm like, dude, that sounds really cool. It was really immersive. I like what they did with the you know placing it in different channels. So I enjoyed it, but I don't. I wasn't like, oh my goodness, that Oro movie. You know, playing in an Oro 3D, I didn't get the impression that man, my ears really like that. So, but I did like it for two channel up mixing, but that was it. Oro 3D filed for bankruptcy in 2022, June of 2022. I'm reading. So yeah, they they probably are dead. Well, Clyde Escape did too. In all fairness, there. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but Clyde Escape had a big. They had a decent amount of. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, stuff. Oro just never because, did. I mean, yeah, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I mean, just because somebody files for bankruptcy doesn't mean they're totally out of it. But yeah, so I'm with the agreement with you guys. Eric Johnson, I was at the last M Wave and we'll be at the next. Appreciate it, man, with VIP. And will there be a day early and late? Oh, so he's saying he'll be there a day early as well as a day late to help out. Appreciate that, man. We definitely require and, and really just need volunteers to help out. You guys are amazing. Love the community. He said it was an amazing experience. Thanks to Ryan and Michael for putting these together. We appreciate you, man. Um, we're just trying to do something different in the space, trying to create some just some cool experiences that you're just not going to get at any other AV event that's out there. And we've got some great ideas for this year, some better ideas from next year. Um so we've got the dates on the website. Don't have registration yet, but at least mark it on your calendar, June 21st through the 23rd. 
of 2024. You can get some, um, I've got lots of videos from this past year. So you can check those out on the website. There's a newsletter. Um, so heck yeah, man. Appreciate you, brother. Last topic. What's this, that? Just real quick. We got yeah, a, go we got a comment saying that Oro regrouped after the bankruptcy. So there you go. I think they even, did they get bought out too? Maybe. I, I didn't a, find that, that, but I'm looking for it. The gentleman that owned it, it was Win, Winfried, I think is his name. I'll say who owns RO. And you guys in the chat, if you know, is there a new ownership besides, um, is it Wilfried or I think it's Wilfried. I, yeah, I Wilfried still don't Van. think it would matter and I wouldn't build a system around it because there's just not right. enough content for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never, they never took off here in the States, that's for sure. I don't even know how much they've got overseas, but they do have more overseas than they do here in the States. They were bought by a private equity firm, Tarhoya says. There's new owner and he was pushed out of the company. That doesn't sound very promising. No. <laughs> so they might have some internal issues they got to work through. So, um, Eric says, I go 5 dB hot on the center, 10 dB hot on the subs. Interesting. Why are you going 5 dB hotter on your center? I, I hear a lot of guys doing that. They're boosting the center. Distortion. Um, Usually that happens when they're, it's, it sounds like muffled content and mm -hmm. things get muffled a lot of times due to distortion so that you end up pushing things hotter to be able to get mm -hmm. or be able to understand the content that's coming out. Yeah. So as far as the youth man harm curve, all that was was way back in. I mean, we're talking. I bet that video is four years ago. Um, I happened to people were asking about the Harmon curve, and so I found where that was. I downloaded it, actually uploaded it to my website, so if people wanted access to that, they could get it um, and use it on their system. So, but that even that is kind of interesting because there are people saying that the Harmon curve was never really designed for you know everybody to use. Like that's not. This was an application, a specific room, um, something to that nature. So there might not be a uh, like, hey, this is the recommended. But a lot of people tend to like that. Um, but the good thing is try it with it. Try it without it. See what sounds better in your room and to your ears and, and go for it, man. So we're getting called out. <laughs> What's that? Oh, hang on. Where are we at? I already put I'm it scared. on the screen. I know, but it's easier for me to see it over here than mm. on the screen. It's bigger because I'm blind. He says, typically, these guys don't have experience. Oro 3D 11.2 will probably crush their system. Top center, try beating two center channels. Mm. And a voice of God just spitting fire into your environment. Man, I forgot that I <laughs> have a voice of God and two centers. <laughs> yes. Oh. How many speakers do you have in your setup, Ryan? Thir uh, there's 30 channels. <laughs> so, so you have the ability in your system yeah i can do it to do almost you can i do can do whatever i want 3d dtsx the whole thing yeah will be at most and i guys oro 3d when yeah. it's done correctly is amazing yeah like it is amazing how they've done it my point is there is no sense in building a system around it right now because there's not enough content. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. From a yeah. fiscal position, it does not make sense to build for something like that. I did it because when I was building the theater, we just put wire drops everywhere. And I had extra sure. speakers and I'm like, well, I can't sell these because they have holes drilled in them. So why don't I just put them on my ceiling? And that's where they went. So it's, I've got dual centers. I've got voice of God. I have more speakers on my ceiling than I do on the ground. So it's, I, yeah. Yeah, so he says, Oral 3D is becoming more common on most receivers. Actually, it's been common on receivers yeah, for a long time. Probably the past five years that I've been, well, probably four years at least. We've seen them on a lot of, especially the Denon Marantz. They were all doing it. Um, yeah. They had all the formats, which was great to give consumers choice. He said, it's getting more and more traction. I don't see that happening. Um, it's not dead. That's cool if you prefer it. Nothing wrong with that. Oral 3D I, with Voice of God and Top Center sounds better than Dolby Atmos. I think Again, with actually mastered Oro 3D content, it can be fantastic. It, it can be the best. 
-hmm. but it's very hard to make because there's a lot of things that have to be done with it. I think it actually has to be recorded in a very specific way, and it's very difficult for um, studios to do. Mm -hmm. And it, when it's done, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. But there's so little content with it, it just doesn't, yep. doesn't make sense. And then lastly, he says, all things can be content, or I don't know if he's saying content or, or content. Like using the upmixer. Okay. Stop being biased, Ryan. Uh, Look, this guy, this guy's been ridiculous. You think we haven't heard these systems? I spent six hours on Thursday night last week in an Oro 3D setup room, and we spent a lot of time on the Oro 3D demoing it out with Oro content. Yeah. We've heard it. All of us have heard it. So you're wrong on that, man. And we have heard a lot of different systems as well to compare. Yeah. I've been to over 51 home theaters. Mm. 51. Now my and speakers. I've, like like my I said, I've heard. Good enough. <laughs> I've heard not a lot, but I've <laughs> heard several that had an Oro 3D setup. And not one of them is on my, you know, th man, this, this was life changing, game changer for me. Not one of them. Mm. And again, I'm not hating. And and this is my preference, just like you have a preference. And I'm too I'm cool with that. Absolutely. I think this guy's just trying to get a rise out of us at yeah. this point. <laughs> Ain't nothing rising over here, man. That's yeah, good. well, I don't have time for that foolishness. Let's move on to someone else. Yeah. You're yeah, you got more grace than I do. I do, but I try to love people, man. All right. How do you guys rate the wisdom audio transmission line subwoofers? Mm -hmm. I wish they dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Preference. Um, mm -hmm. and that's just me. I've heard a couple of them in systems and um, they have a lot of output, but um, yeah. Some of them are really cool though. They, and I don't know, I'm assuming it's transmission line. They were using, and I don't know the model numbers, but in their showroom, which was really, really well done, they got a bunch of different cool demo areas, but one of the main lobby areas, they have in ceiling speakers but they're different type of end ceiling speakers. They're not your traditional. And so, of course, they don't produce hardly any bass. And so they have some end ceiling with the tubes, you know. And so there's a port in the ceiling for the bass. But again, I don't know if that's considered a, an audio transmission line. I don't know the um, – I need to tour his theater. I'm, I'm open to that. I'm not saying he has a bad theater. So, but yeah, I haven't. I, yeah, again, way out of my budget. That is for sure on the wisdom. Bet says uh, theater room. Let me make sure. We did, did that we one do already. This? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, da, 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 da. We kind of covered that one, right? One second, so we'll roll to room. 95. Oh, okay. But on the sun and dialing it back on the system. Oh, on the sub. Is that wrong? Why why ninety five dB? Maybe well, that's just there's an example. Like ten dB hot. So that's mm -hmm. not quite right. That is actually wrong because you have ten dB of dynamic headroom. So if you're trying to do not wrong because we all just told you that we do nine to fourteen dB hot. So if your preference is ten dB hot, that's fine. But it's okay. not, you're not supposed to calibrate. Your subs are still supposed to go to 75 dB if you've got a commercial retail AVR or 85 dB if you've got like a storm audio, for instance. And then that 30 dB of headroom to go to 115 dB. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, th from 75 to 105 for speakers and from 75 to 115, which is 40 dB of headroom is built into the dynamic headroom. So 95 isn't, really accurate unless you just unless you got a storm processor and you want your subs tend to be hot basically is, is what that amounts to so your speakers and your subs should be set to the same level relative to your receiver and then the headroom is built into the track like the lfe track has 30 db of headroom if you're 85 and the main speaker track has 20 db of headroom if you're if you're set to 85 does that make sense like the dynamic headroom it's that's dynamic headroom it's not you don't set a different level I, I see you guys are kind of like scratching your head. I didn't explain that right. Someone else. No, you know, so I'm, I'm chatting and did. A question. Okay. You explained it right. I'm just, I can't, I can't. Do I'm waiting for Michael to take off his combat helmet. Cause he's, 
<laughs> Being nice. All right, Ezra says, can someone explain what makes amps better than other amps? Youth Man recent home theater video had $25,000 each amps. Does the amp really make a big difference in sound quality? Great question, Ezra. This makes a lot of amps better than a lot of other amps. What do you mean by that? No. I mean, it's subjectivity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's a measurable difference in a lot of these situations, but we are not mm -hmm. machines. And I think once you get to a certain level, if the amp can do it mm -hmm. and the noise floor is good enough, it is very, very near and nigh impossible to be able to tell mm -hmm. the difference. I mean, Jonathan and I have done numerous blind tests with this. It's, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Tony says the marketing. <laughs> Jay Boogie says this answer is good. Yeah. Yeah. Is that bogey or boogie? There's two O's, right? Boogie. Boogie. Okay. I just want to make sure. Uh, let's see. Jay Boogie says, what do you guys think about the TCL 98 inch QLED TV? A four grand. Did we I have think that one? Be awesome for daytime doing. No, it just came out. That. Okay. I don't follow the TVs as much. Does it, ha I think does it have a bunch of dimming zones? That's, that's going to be its downfall if it does not. It does it not. Oh. It does not. So for daytime viewing, I think it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. For nighttime viewing, mm -hmm. no. But if you're looking for a Super Bowl TV, mm -hmm. be awesome. Mm -hmm. Be fantastic. So... Depends on what you're going for. 192 localized zones. So that's not like, isn't a lot like in the thousands at this point? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. So that seems like a lot of money for, for a 98 inch TV. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. No, what I'm, no, I'm saying like you're spending four grand, that, but you're not getting what. Yeah, but it's John a 98 said. inch TV. It's the trade off is size. Okay. So it's, Typically, a 98-inch TV. Samsung, I think, has one that's below $10,000. Okay. Uh, so, so it's like your budget-friendly 98-inch yes. QLED. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott says, how, do you place, how did you place Atmos in your room with the lower ceiling? Oh, I think he was talking about Scott. So honestly, Scott's setup, he's got some limitations. Remember I told you, if you were here earlier, there's a back wall that prevents him from pushing Atmos over. Um, it's really kind of, I mean, it's within a, I mean, it's a small area. They're only a few feet apart from each other. So the angles probably aren't um, exactly ideal on that. Uh, but again, he's got a limited setup to work with. Uh, just, uh, yeah, I just recommend going to the um, Dolby Atmos website and checking out there because everything's about angles you're looking at proper angles and they give you a range so check that out steven uh from home theater gurus has a lot of videos on that so definitely do some research there randy says what amplifier do you use to power your boss hover platforms in your setups i don't have a boss or hover i'm not sure who he was asking Scott yeah, I don't I don't think that matters too much because uh class D is fine, class A, B is fine, class G, they all, and they're all gonna be fine as long as you can get the, the driver to move. And for like boss, mm -hmm. uh if you got an open air driver, if you're using mm -hmm. a hover, it probably needs a little more power, but they're using so little power for the open air ones. You're talking like 40 watts per driver um for like an open air boss. With the hover ones that use like the inner tube around there, then you do need more power, but it's not it. It doesn't really matter that much. Just get an amplifier that's rated for the right power. You can go to ABS forums and get some ideas. Yeah. We've kind of talked about cheap options before. If you're looking for something cheap, you can get an old Crown XLS amplifier on eBay for next to nothing, like 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks. For yeah. a, like, I'll give you a model number, XLS402 or XLS802. They're just dirt cheap, and they're very powerful, and they're very reliable. Just seem to have enough power output. It's really all that yeah. matters. Because the distortion really isn't going to matter for something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So Gabe says, hey, guys, my room has hollow drywall. One side is drywalled, but has concrete behind it. 
would it make any audio difference like acoustically in the room if I filled the other walls with insulation? I would fill them all with insulation. So he's got drywall and then concrete like right behind it. I'm trying to figure out like where's this insulation gonna go? He's got concrete. Okay. Studs, drywall. So he would fill that, the stud base already, with that should already have insulation, no, right? No, not if it's an internal wall. Okay. That's what you're saying. Internal walls don't get insulated typically. Is this a new room or do you hear any difference now? That'd be my question. Like are you are you chasing phantoms or do you hear of a problem that you're trying to trying to fix? And whether it's the drywall or the concrete wall behind it, I don't know. But I've talked about this in multiple podcasts. My room's asymmetrical, and this is an outside wall to the house. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the same scenario. It would be a drywall with concrete right behind it. Sure. And that wall, even though my SPL meter would say, hey, you're at 75 dB on that, from that right speaker, from that left speaker, from all my speakers, that right wall always made that sound sound like my right side was louder than my left mm -hmm. until I put up some acoustic treatments. So... If you're noticing a problem, then go ahead and put up some acoustic treatments. And if you're not noticing a problem, don't chase phantoms. Don't sweat it. Okay. Yeah, that'd be my recommendation. Good point. Is rock wool, is it rock wool? I thought it was rock wool. I think they call it rock wool. Yeah. Is rock wool worth putting in wall ceiling for soundproofing? Sound absorption? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> He's saying proofing, though. So you're not going to stop a. Right, a hundred foot base wave with rock wool. No, that's right. Yeah, right. wavelength's too long. You need about a quarter of the length of the wavelength for you to really do any significant dampening, and a half is even better of the wavelength. You're talking base wavelengths at like twenty hertz of like eighty feet. So uh -huh. unless you're going to put twenty foot of rock wool in there, you're not going to stop those twenty hertz frequencies. Is what it amounts to. But yeah. yes, it will diminish the high frequencies, and it will help in that regard if you're building a room. Uh, Martin says, how do you set up base shakers, actuators, if you need an LFE signal without room EQ? I have a Denon 3700H with multi-EQX with a mini DSP 2x4HD. So I feel like we gave that pretty recently on another video, right? Was it, okay. a couple, was it like three weeks ago, maybe, that we talked about that? Is that right? Something like that. It was a couple weeks ago. Go dig through the archives. <laughs> I, I wish I we could give them the exact date because we yeah. we spoke on this at length, actually. Yeah. So it's a big topic, longer topic. Yeah. Okay. I think it I think it was our last podcast when we were all three together. I think it was three weeks ago at this point, okay. right? So look back well, we and find one week, with didn't all we? three of us. Well, it, maybe well, before your guys' break, before the two week break or whatever. Mm. Is that right? Oh, Randy. One of the Rockstool. one of the most recent ones. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any suggestions? 11.2 channel AVR. 3,800 3, is hard to beat at a thousand bucks, man, for sure. And then just add a two channel amplifier. Yeah. I think that's end uh, of question right there. There's nothing <laughs> that's going to beat that. To make it so, social. So you oh. could also say the Onkyo RZ50 is very popular in that same range, but it might go yeah, over a thousand bucks. It might but be even like then, I trust the brand of Denon and Morantz more. They've mm -hmm. they've been doing this for a lot longer, and I Onkyo is just too new back into the game for me to mm -hmm. recommend yeah, they kinda, them over. They kind of dipped out for yeah, quite a while. They're too new back for me to recommend them over Denon and Morantz. So you're just saying, you know, give them some time. Let's see how they shake out. Yeah. So they can prove themselves. Yeah. Jamaica Social SVS is suggesting a new speaker. Is suggest a new speaker or sub is coming. Okay, so they're saying they've got new speakers or possibly a new sub coming. Do you think PV6 Ultra is long in the tooth? And where would they go beyond 16? Or do you think a new flagship will replace the Ultra Towers? Honestly, this is just all guessing and hypothetical. So I'm not sure it really brings much value to the community by just saying what we think on that. Um, I just always say, just wait, give it time. They'll announce I imagine it we'll they know do. in the next couple of weeks with CDS. Mm -hmm. They yeah. kind of hinted at that at M-Wave a little bit, that there was a new product coming that was going to make a lot of people happy, but they didn't really specify what that was. Yeah. yeah. So we're literally guessing. 
I mean, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Soundbar would be a big thing for the market. I mean, that's yeah. there's not a lot of good soundbars from companies that know what they're doing, and I think that would be a people will hate me for this, but I think yeah. that would be good. Yeah. Dude, what's wrong with Jonathan's shirt? <laughs> the color is offensive to him, apparently. What, what's wrong, man? Well, let me see what the just um, green. Green polo. I, I, I had that. Hang on, where's the I, 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 where's the comment that's up? I can't find it to turn it off. I'm gonna I'm gonna create GoFundMe if that's what they need. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Oh, boy. Yeah, I was like, what the heck? All right. Kevin says, uh do you guys know by any chance what would cause audio to cut out every once in a while? Amp My first protection. question is what? Well, first question would be what is your processor or um, AVR? I've had some experience with some of them that had issues with that. Um, you could see the video, but the audio would be there like, I mean, just sometimes it just stop. Could that be HDMI issues like handshake issues? Possibly. Potentially. The, the the thing that comes to my mind is I had a darn banana terminal that came loose on one of my things and it was kind of shortened out every once in a while and cutting out the audio. So check so all your it, connections. It shut out the audio on your whole AVR? Just that channel. Wow. Oh, no. What? He's talking about like audio cuts out. Like I'm assuming like he gets no sound. Okay. He's, he's Everything's going and then all of a sudden he doesn't. So let us know, Kevin. It's likely a short of some sort. Just I'm check your say wiring. Shorts or protection is what I'm gonna I, say. Oh, like I said, I've heard clipping or something. Yes, I've heard some that, um, like I said, they just had some issues in that area. <laughs> so, but look what, look what, uh, so getting a lot of love here. Not that uh, the shirt's not offensive. Just, just his face. Oh, wow, <laughs> get oh. out of here, Tony. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so honestly, there's a lot of questions. So, OSU Fanatic 1980, Ryan, in the last video, you mentioned going 2.1 ratio on a new screen. Could you give a two minute summary of why you chose that ratio and if you plan on masking or anything? So, so definitely reason, is not a real problem. No, well, Chirpy's doing the same thing, isn't he? Nothing. I don't know what ratio he's using, actually. I, I don't know. I heard that he was doing 2.0. Uh, the big reason that I'm doing that is. One, it's different. Two, I think 2.0 fills a wall really well. So if I want to do like floor to ceiling, mm -hmm. side to side, 2.0 does really well. Uh, and then with an NV, it allows me to stretch and manipulate any of the content a lot easier without perceivable distortion is where that mm -hmm. comes from. So a few different facets, but that's really why I'm doing it. Um, don't really have another another answer but 2o will be the next one somebody on that last comment said it could be an eARC issue if you're using that like a drop in signal mm -hmm. now i have had that happen sure in the living room and usually if i just shut off the tv turn it back on then it resyncs back up but normally it doesn't drop out like as i'm watching a movie it just when i first boot it up it doesn't sync right so I'll have to shut off the TV, turn it back on. So sometimes it does that. But I don't know what would cause it like mid-movie. Austin says Focal has a crazy sale right now. Looking at the Area 926 and wanting the Martin Logan ESL. This is two-channel living room. AVR, maybe amp-powered. Thoughts on Focal or Martin Logan? Mm. This is for a two-channel listening room? Mm-hmm. How much are the Aria nights? This kind of defaults back to Michael's point that it's hard for us to advise you on what you'll like for speakers. Personally speaking, I, I've heard Focal at multiple shows, and I've never really thought they did anything terribly exciting. Martin Logan has kind of a distinct sound. You'll like it or don't. Mm -hmm. um, but, but your preference, man, that's, that's what it amounts to. What do you like, Austin? So, so these are four. Fourteen hundred and thirty-nine dollars a piece right now. Mm -hmm. Amazon. <laughs> That's an accurate Thank price. You. 
is Ryan two channel? Hmm? Is Ryan's mic cutting in and out on your yes. job? Yes. Okay. I yeah, wasn't sure if it was me or him. My internet's doing some weird stuff. You got that Dollar Tree Wi Fi? What's up, man? Yes. Martin Logan for two channel. No question. I mean, I get guys that come over to two channel listening at my house, and it's they swear the center channel's on, and it's not. That's just there's something magical about Martin Logan electrostatics for two channel, and I don't think really very few brands are going to be able to emulate that. Is there a big difference in price on the area nine two sixes and the the ESL? No. Or are they similar? Okay, they're similar in price. Okay. Some reasons I was thinking the area. I'm not familiar with the the different models on Focal. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. And if you want pricing, uh, I sell both. MW Martin Logan. Yeah, I'll sell you either one. MW says on a projector, how many nits do you need to get HDR like an OLED? Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think you can really not any projector I've ever seen. You guys have seen those Christies. Does it get the there? Eclipse. Yes. Yeah. Like seventeen million. But it's five hundred thousand. I'm burning. It's five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan says you don't. Christie no, Eclipse you... can. Yeah. But even then, the Eclipse to get the perfect blacks and stuff, you're limiting its light output. So yeah. I don't think you can. No. Yeah. Man, I went over to that that guy I was telling you about Oro 3D where we were over there listening to a sound system. He has nine ceiling speakers, voice of God, front center, all that stuff for his different setups. But to this question, he had a new G3 97-inch TV that he bought from you, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan. Yep. And we were sitting like almost reach out and touch at distance, which was way too close for my taste. But <laughs> we were there for six hours, and that the brightness, the peak's brightness on like those YouTube mm -hmm. 4K, 8K HDR type clips – like hurts. the Las Vegas clip and stuff. Phenomenal. I mean, you're at, I think he measured it 990 nits in yeah. his room. Yeah. Th that That's bright, man. Those highlights are bright. It hurts. You like come away with a sunburn. <laughs> that's <laughs> got to wonder a little bit, but, but it was, it was super impressive. And I, I, I haven't seen a projector that can rival that. Yeah. I mean, in comparison, I measured mine just recently. I bought a little cheap meter. Let's see, what did I get? Um, here we go. The nits. I measured a whopping 95.5 nits. Not even close to 750. So, yeah. And that's on a, what, $9,000 projector? New? Four years ago? Mm-hmm. Uh, go fight when kick booty. Have you guys ever heard any in walls that can rival really good towers great question there's some good companies making some great in walls perlissa makes good in walls um i've heard some that i wasn't real pleased with um i probably heard more in walls that i didn't like than what i do like put it that way but i haven't even heard the new perlissons so my problem know... with most in walls is you can't aim them mm -hmm. they're limited mm-hmm uh, da, da, da. but as far as which ones i mean i've heard some yeah mm -hmm. but have you heard that rival really good towers i have not mm -hmm. like a true in wall or an on wall <laughs> you saying in walls <laughs> in wall no well the perlison s7i yeah now I've you, heard can't, the, you can't I've, aim it so i've heard some um some of the wisdom audio in walls and i'll be honest man they were pretty that was one of those that kind of woke me up like okay these can actually sound phenomenal but they're but crazy expensive yeah wisdom in you're bordering the on the line of is that actually an in wall i mean it's right. and that's what mw is saying he's like it like is the wall like their standard no that's like it's the same the only one that i think that would come to mind with that are the high-end Martin Logan stuff per listen. And this is actual in-walls, not on-walls. Mm -hmm. um, 
That's all I got. Yeah. In my opinion, that's opinionated listening, like subjective. Yeah. yeah so he's saying that line array of mini speakers. He's a, that's hard to consider it an in wall. It just happens to be placed in wall. Yeah. I mean, I guess you yeah. could consider Martin Logan's statement 40XW the same. Mm hmm. Yeah. Crick's wall of sound. Yeah. Tony brings up a point. My 4000s are in wall. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Best that's in wall funny. subwoofer. For real. Yeah, I've never heard an in-wall subwoofer quite like yours, man. <laughs> Jamie Hill, which MTM center speaker would you pick? A larger one with higher output and 20-degree off-axis dispersion or a smaller one with 30-degree of dispersion but lower output? Room is small with only three seats. I would think whichever has the best off-axis response, regardless of the dispersion. 20 and 30 degree horizontal dispersion is super narrow. That's like what, more narrow than my Martin Logan's. What are we talking about here? What's what's what MTM speaker are we talking about here? Jamie, do you have a model? Maybe he's talking about vertical dispersion, perhaps. That would make sense. Which would be more sensible with those numbers. Uh, well, he said he says three seats, so I'm assuming he's talking horizontal dispersion. Well, what speakers would seats. that be? Uh -huh. The tweeter would have to be recessed into it like some black hole to make the it only speaker days. that I know of that would even encroach on that is Perlisten, and they're closer to like forty. Later, Tony. I don't know who else that would be. Mm -mm. Jamie, let us know, man. He may have already dipped out. Nope. Oh, here he is. MTM center laying horizontally. MTMs are normally horizontal. He means vertically. I'm, Jamie, I'm you're not confused. helping us out here, buddy. <laughs> Give us some details, man. What what are we talking here? Well, that yeah. if he's if he's got his MTM center vertical, then that makes the vertical horizontal. So then we're back where that made more sense. The twenty to thirty is vertical is more traditional. Okay. Well, why would you do that, <laughs> Tony? Totally don't much difference really. Goodness gracious. That's like taking a tower speaker and laying it on its side. Give us Not some give us some model numbers. An MTM yeah. is probably going to perform better vertically. In fact, that's one of the upgrades ABS form guys always say is if you got an MTM, which is mid tweeter mid, and you get those little phasing mm -hmm. issues and stuff like that. Aaron's audio corner made that great video on why does my center channel suck. Yeah. You eliminate you eliminate some of those phasing issues that are audible to your outside seats, your left and right seats when you vertical that speaker. So it's not a bad idea by all accounts in theory to raise that vertically. Um, let's get some model numbers, Jamie. If you're still on here, give us some model numbers. You're talking he literally about. just he commented just a second ago. So let us know, buddy. Uh, considering RBH now has a big 21-inch infrasonics and Gene loves his doing 5 hertz flat in his room, do you think more companies will consider doing the same? Again, it's really up to the companies. I don't think a lot of companies are chasing single digits. I think that's still pretty niche. There's only because it takes a, I mean, it takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of engineering. I don't think a lot of people are chasing single digits. Um, most companies are, are doing good to hit around 12. I'm sorry, 20, 19, 18, maybe 17, 16, but very few companies are, are hitting single digits. So I think that's still going to be pretty niche for most brands. I don't think a lot of them are chasing that. Yeah, he's like, Herc says, that thing is $10,000 for 21 inches. And and again, when you're getting those big sub over 20s, 30s, shoot, I just heard the uh, uh, Ascendo Audio, 50-inch sub -over. Incredible. It's $108,000. I think it's 104. No, it's not. All right, dude, I'm going to prove you wrong. I the price sheet. I literally I know you have got the price sheet. 50-inch MSRP. There we go. 50 inch on Hey Now. 139,000. Yeah, but who's Hey Now? I don't know. I'm just saying Hey Now. <laughs> I don't know. Here's a 2020 price list. Oh, that's in some other numer. Numer, numer. Well, fellas, we are about at Why three my... hours. So. Jamie wrote back. Jamie we should, we should contest. that one off. Oh, where's that? What's that? What do you say? 
He's talking about taking a vertical intended tower and laying on its side, the 1723 or the 1691. Uh, don't do that, Jamie. Yeah, that's don't not. Don't do that. Your, inner, because, your timing um, and your yeah. alignment's all going to be wrong. Don't do that. Yeah. That speaker's designed to be vertical. And so when you start separating that tweeter from the kind of like the mid-range drivers and the base drivers and you do that horizontal, go, I, I would encourage you, go watch um, Aaron's Audio Corner and search for why center channels suck. And he talks through the different design philosophies and which ones measure better. I think you're just going to run into some issues if you take that tower and lay it horizontal. Um, yes, I have seen the Christie Eclipse once. I saw it at Cedia last year. It's literally it's the most amazing projector I've seen. And I've also seen the Griffin. Griffin is gorgeous too. And it's the Griffin's gonna be there a too. Fifth, a fifth of the price. Dude, I'd take a Christie Griffin any day. That thing <laughs> I mean, seriously, but it's 80 grand. So it's expensive too. So they make yeah, a Aaron's, back to Jamie, they they make a 1723 center. Why not do the center? Mm, okay. Don't don't take a tower and turn yeah, it on its yeah. side. Don't do that. Yeah. So it's kind of a gotcha is the 1723 is a two-way and the center is also a two-way. So Aaron's audio corner is going to tell you you need a two and a half or three-way for a center channel. So it's it's interesting. It looks like maybe they basically did the same thing. They just rotated the 1723 on its side and mm-hmm. called it good. Yeah, I bet you there's more to it than that, but maybe I not. I hope so. Aaron's Aaron Center Channel video saved my life. This is into young percussion. <laughs> it is a good that is a good show, a good video to learn a lot. Yeah. Aaron's a good dude, man. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, Randy said he's seen the eclipse. What did you think of it, Randy? pretty wild man and yes starlight i've seen the videos of the 80 inch but i haven't i think the only one that i know it. of is over in over in germany germany at their showroom yeah if you want some s4 well s4. not the s4s i've got s4bs from m wave yeah mm-hmm. i actually think i have some s4s so i think i have four of them look at okay. that Shoot him an email. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just happen to have them. I think I do. <laughs> what type weird. of speakers do I have in the front? Yeah, those are the Renaissance, the 15As. Two channel, there's very few speakers that are able to compete. Mm-hmm. Actually, the, one of the. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, no, I was changing topic, so finish your topic. One of the only speakers, and this has been the hardest thing about me thinking about my new theater that I'm designing, is trying to find a speaker that does home theater and two channel really, really well. And it was something that I was really racking my brain on until I went to Atlanta home theater and then that changed. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's very few speakers that are able to compete. Um, They're if you're doing two channel electrostatics, amazing. Yeah. Mike says a bookshelf or normal center. I'd take a bookshelf. Mm, If you can do three identical bookshelves. Oh. over a bookshelf, horizontal center bookshelf? I would. While I, would I agree with that, you're going to be hard-pressed to be able to tell the difference. I think you're going to get more cohesiveness, though. Yeah. I, I, I know when I went to an, an identical LCR, dude, that was awesome. But was it subjective? Because you couldn't fast switch. It could be, 100%. So my point with but this I, is, this we're kind of going down the rabbit hole of are there measurable differences and is there comb filtering and stuff? Absolutely. But what the can thing is, can you hear it? And I don't know. I'm just saying right. they find that it may not be as big of a change if you can. Maybe we should do that at M-Wave next year. If you can match them, that's pretty important and probably more important than the comb filtering concerns and so forth. Because I mean, how many guys in here have had a certain speaker line? Like I had Wharfdale Sapphire, for instance, right? Two towers, full towers mm-hmm. with lots of drivers, 
tall up to here on my chest and their little wharfdale center speaker was like this big it was an mtm and it sucked yeah. Yeah. right you know so matching bookshelves i'd absolutely take it in that case yeah. if you're if you're talking about dropping a 1723 on its side then you know maybe the jury's still out but mm -hmm. oh cool randy said arts uh home he went to arts get together that that's that would have cool. been a good one to go to yeah so Art invited me to to his, and I just couldn't make it. I had some other obligations. Um, but at to um, at Scott's event just this past weekend, there were some guys from Michigan, and they were saying, "Hey, man, we really need to get you up here because we got some cool stuff." And Art's one of those that would be on the way. So I told him, "I said, come up with a plan. Let's figure out what it, you know, how many there are, and the distance between them, the logistics, and all that fun stuff." So that's funny. That means, man, it's three hours. Holy cow, dude. So here was my topic change. And maybe we can end on this if there's not any right, questions. Get it, man. So the elephant in the room is this little scratch above the eye for Ryan. Hang on, where I know a little something about that, but I want to hear I want to hear uh the story. Uh -oh. I want to share the story. And then I want to brag on you a little bit, man, because you did something epic at that little firefight. I didn't do anything there. epic. Yes, you did. Uh -huh. so, so we went shooting. Uh, and Sheldon and I carp on the forums. We're both newbies with guns. We haven't shot very much in our lives. I shot in college and haven't shot much since, but we got a couple rifles and we wanted to take them in and life of bliss. And mm -hmm. Ryan here took us out and showed us the ropes, showed us how to clean our guns and sight them in and everything. And we had some fun shooting and at hundred yards, they had target and that center bead was this big. And I'm telling you the truth here. Ryan shot a, a round through that center target, centered at 100 yards. Wow. Amazing. Sheldon and I were like, what just happened? How did you do that? That's pretty remarkable. You got a dude in the bushes shooting it from the back from like 10 <laughs> yards. That's what it was. It was. I, 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 I thought I got a picture of it, and I was looking through it to show it, but I didn't grab a picture of it, which makes me sad. No, no I was nice just thought. trying to sight in the – I got some new toys, and I was just trying to sight in um, – and evidently the, the seven, the Remington 700 I got is a good one. So it's, it'll be nice to, to keep. But this is from the last, uh, we were just packing up and we were shooting from about 225 yards and the slope was like this and I didn't have a good position behind the gun and my shoulder was kicked out a little bit. I was at a really funny angle and the scope came back and and got mm. me. so it was so after a shot it's real it's it's warm out there so he's wiping the sweat off his face we thought and then we noticed the blanket that he's wiping oh, yeah. off is bloody and we're like what just happened did you yeah. get hit with your casing or you the know scope like, came back and kissed me <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's mixed him up pretty good it's yes, the scope's scope, fine and that maybe. was all that mattered <laughs> yeah it was fine yeah. uh, scope kiss of love the comments yep, <laughs> yep. just didn't have a good good position on it got a little too close and pop it's all good i made sure to put another one down and show the target who was boss so it was fine oh. Bing. both ryan and kyle are fine shooters kyle mm. hit i had a little 22 pistol i brought kyle hit a real life size profile person uh mm. they just the top half that was hanging from it was a steel cutout hit that two times out of 10 shots with a 22 pistol. Uh, what, how many yards was that last place we were shooting from? You really think he hit that? I heard it hit twice out of those 10 rounds. I couldn't hit it at a hundred yards. He hit it at whatever our last I position. I don't know. I'm a hundred percent sure, man. I didn't even have earplugs in so I could hear it. Cause it's just I didn't 22. either. I heard it twice. That was 225 yards with a 22 pistol. I and he hit it. Twice. He did hit it from 100. Multiple he had times. A, he, had a, he hit it over and like over. That. He was like, yeah. ding, 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 Once ding. Once he got it dialed in, that, yeah. So, I was he at like a 45 degree angle when he shot it? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm serious. Sheldon will back me up. We heard it. Huh? That was Good impressive. That's With awesome. a, little, a little wind, not bad wind. Yeah, and Finster, the scope's fine. That was what I was concerned about. This will go away. Yeah. So, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Was that a 700? Yeah, it was a Remington 700. So, uh, Magpul is that model do you get a right. picture of that target you hit at 100 yards man that was ready for a trophy oh it's i it was nothing <laughs> but it's like oh, it was nothing. we got to get jonathan out more <laughs> all the time <laughs> see that's what i'm talking about tar Hoya right there man the, I, I, the I, expect I bet, yeah 
there was a bush guy in Bush ten years. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's right. His wife was in the corner helping him out. No, the center of that target was no bigger than this little Apple TV remote circle, and he hit it smack dab in the center of that. That's little awesome. Target. I got lucky from a hundred yards. From a hundred yards. Wow. I would not be able. To. I wouldn't be able to hit the big dude. Full, <laughs> full, full dude, man. Mm. You're you were the guy in the bushes throwing rocks. I was. I, was. <laughs> I I I can honestly say I was, and I was actually in Chicago land area, getting the 150 dB crush from newbies, 14 18 inch subwoofers. So so the testament of that too is that hey, these are four guys that met in this hobby, mm -hmm. and now are friends, and we hung out doing something completely different, shooting okay. weapons, just having a fun day. We spent. Well, you guys went out there even earlier than us, but we were there till four or five in the afternoon. Or that's when I got home, I should say. Probably left about four. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, you went out there and shot shotguns before we even got there with the rifles. Yeah, I was out with Kyle since like 830. Yeah. So we did that was a, good day. a bunch of And we were out gauge. playing pool, you know? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Again, I, I'd, I'd still kind of circle back around the whole community aspect. I mean... Some people are realizing we, we had this conversation at Scott's house with some folks and and they were kind of under the impression that they, they didn't realize that people actually do this, like bring people together and have get togethers in their home. And, you know, they were thinking that everybody's just kind of a loner and, and it does feel isolated a lot of times because I know there's a lot, a lot of people that I know locally that have home theaters. I mean, there's a few, but nothing like what you guys have up there. But the fact that we can share life together, we can share. I mean, we had a, a gentleman that had a really tragic event um, just within the past couple of days. And we were able to share that experience with them, you know, and at least kind of come around. And and to me, that's just the bigger picture. I mean, yes, speakers are cool. Amplifiers are cool. You know, getting a scope kiss of death is cool. <laughs> but just doing life together, man, having fun, laughing like we're doing here tonight, um, you know, building relationships and friendships. That's what it's all about. And that's what we hope that we're doing here on this podcast that I do with my channel that, you know, the home theater uh, crawls that you guys do in your area and Scott's event and M wave, all of these things. We're really just trying to, to promote the community as a whole. And, um, just build this up, man. I'm the only one with a home theater. Yeah, see, so Chris is like, you know, he doesn't know anybody else. So so one thing we're going to do at M-Wave next year is I really want to provide it. I can't organize it, but I can probably help encourage it. We're going to do a big push and try to implement some things that may help you at least find out who's in your area that are from M-Wave at least who's in your, your actual state. And we're going to give you physical opportunities to connect with those, exchange numbers, and maybe you're going to start something in your state. I know two M-Waves ago, when we first launched it in 2022, had a, uh, a group of guys, I think it was about five of them, four or five of them, that found out during the event there were four or five other people from the Dallas area. And every they told they came back this past uh 2023 mwave 2023 and they said michael we have been meeting every single month since mwave 2022 that's phenomenal and that's what i hope that we can kind of help facilitate or at least encourage and provide some opportunities to help build that structure at mwave 2024 so we definitely hope you guys come out and hang out with us we've got the dates on the website we don't have registration open um, June 21st through the 23rd. Make sure you mark your calendars, man. We've got folks that are coming back from Hawaii. Hopefully the gentleman, I believe I talked to him, he's coming back from Vancouver, Canada. And I even had a guy email me and he said, Michael, he said, let me know when you have your dates because I'm over in Finland and I'm coming. Mm -hmm. So that would be super cool. But we'd love to have you join us. All the details are at the website, MidwestAVExperience.com. Hope you guys can make it. We do some fun stuff. We do comparisons. We do full Dolby Atmos um, experiences. 
we do uh, home theater tours, some of the local guys in Kansas City, um, and we build community, and that's really what we're about. So any thoughts, fellas, before we wrap it up? We're at three hours and nine minutes, and there's still 165 of you guys and maybe ladies <laughs> are still hanging out. So we appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, man, if this, if this is a value to you, if this is, you know, whether it's education or entertainment or just a chance just to hang out with other enthusiasts, man, ping that like button. I don't know what you want to call that. You know, I don't even think it does anything with YouTube world, but do it anyway. Just let me know. <laughs> it's funny on StreamYard it says there's two likes, but then I did, I'm like, man, really? There's like 166 people here, but then yeah, I flipped over and there was definitely a lot more. So, all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you all have an incredible week. If you need anything, uh, as far as, um, uh, gear wise reach out to ryan you can hit us up on midwestavexperience.com slash sales go check out jonathan's channel he's got an awesome youtube channel i want to <laughs> see some more content brother i'm working on it it's hard I got some arendelles to review here shortly and then i got to do another jvc versus epson continue oh, i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a shameless plug too so i've been trying to build up my um vertical content so i'm mm -hmm. doing some youtube shorts i'm doing tiktoks so definitely go check me out on TikTok, YouTube Shorts. You're already subscribed here. Um, but I'm trying to grow that channel as well. And uh, it's just a different audience, man. I've got, I posted a video the other day. It has 1.6 million views in three weeks. I'm like, holy cow, that's insane. So just having some fun with it, trying some new stuff. So if you're in the TikTok world, go check me out. All right, guys. See yeah. all the shameless plug. Anybody else need a plug? <laughs> Yeah. I just got to address this. Why are you so why angry? Why do I always look so angry? It's just. Oh, man. You would too if you had to deal with Michael all the time. Whatever, <laughs> dude. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. It's just me and Jonathan now. <laughs> I'm going to come over on the other side. No. <laughs> all right. Eric, Hold appreciate on. the $10 super chat as we wrap up. I saw it. Uh, Super experience as usual. Thanks, guys. From one of the Tigers here, uh, regards to Jamie, who seems to be local also. What is he referencing there? I don't know. Well, the Clemson uh, Tigers is what sport, it looks like. Right? It's okay, the Clemson okay. Tigers. I don't follow any kind of sports. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best comment. One of the best comments of the night. Anger is how Ryan keeps his head warm. It all fell here. out because I'm so angry. <laughs> As my nephew would say, you're yeah. mad dad, sad dad, is what he calls me. Yeah, yeah man. Mad dad, a lot sad of people dad. see it. But when you know, and he, I think he even mentioned, he's like, I've, I've met Ryan in person. I mean, he's, he's a lot of fun. We laugh a lot, but yeah, on the podcast, he's the resting B face, I, I guess people call it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> we love no you, man. Question. All right, guys, have a great week. Enjoy your time with your family. Enjoy your systems and we'll catch you in. I've got some new videos coming out tomorrow and then the next day. And then eventually I'll get that AVM 70 review.